uh, they're married, but their experience is messed up, is, is torturous. Uh, it's filled with uh, negative emotions. And there are other people who are on the same plane, mm -hmm. but their experience is peaceful. They relate to each other differently. Uh, the journey, we're on the journey together. We're all on the journey. Mm -hmm. But if you have one life to live and you're only to be married once, uh, you should love yourself enough uh, to make the most out of it. And by being here tonight, you are separating yourself from the economy mentality because there's a different level of investment. Most people won't invest. They just sit there and they're, they're married. They won't make an uncommon investment to have a different experience. So first class cost more. You, you invest more, you work on it, you prioritize it. You say, this is important. You take time to evaluate, self-assess and say, how can I be better? Just right off the top, you're different because most men, most women don't ask themselves the difficult questions on how can I be better? And although I'm enjoying my marriage, I'm not stuck. I want to get better. I want to improve. I want my life to please God. I want to glorify God. And I know the primary way in which I glorify God is going to be in my marriage and in my family. So it doesn't de be, it doesn't do, there, there are many people who are very successful but their lives are in shambles. So uh, this is separating you from everybody else because you are making the investment in your marriage. And I want you to know the investment that you're making tonight, mm -hmm. for those of you who are economy-minded people, business-minded people, the investment that you make tonight is going to pay dividends for years to come. And so we're going to dig in. Amen. Amen. All right. And uh, for those of you who joined the room later, there was a discussion about the um, the homework that we gave yesterday. So glad to hear that many of you did that. Uh, that there, you just you just got really valuable information about your spouse, and you want to go on a journey of intentionally communicating love in a way that your spouse understands. Uh, speak their love language, not your love language. You want to speak their love language and they too speak your love language. And so when we do that, we are literally just pouring in uh, more love. We are, we are making deposits into yes. your emotional bank account. So if you did not do it, um, all we ask you to do is do the love la five la love languages test. It's a free test. You can Google it online and, get, and take that. But it's going to give you some really, really um, important information and sometimes even give you um, insight as to why uh, you have some of the challenges you might be having yeah. uh, because you're not speaking each other's love language. Yeah, it's one thing to tell people, hey, you need to love your wife. Mm -hmm. You need to love your husband, but how? Right. How? What way does my spouse hear and receive love? Because I can, I remember there was a time where uh, I was, thinking I was loving you and I got you a gift, but I got you a gift. Uh, I got you a Fred Hammond CD. And I know that Fred Hammond was in the U UK. I got you a Fred Hammond CD uh, when his new album, Pages of Life, that was years ago, it came out and it was the stuff. I mean, that's where you had no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I mean, it was, it was filled with uh, all the jams. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I enjoyed that style of music. My wife didn't. So I'm getting her a gift and communicating love in a way that blesses me, not in a way that communicates to her. And just uh, understanding her love language and what speaks to her rather than what speaks to me 
is how you learn to communicate love. So it's important that you study and know your spouse, know how they receive, how they interpret love, because very likely it's different than how you interpret love. And if you communicate to them based on how you speak the language of love, you can find that you're just missing each other and experiencing unnecessary frustration. For my people are destroyed. My husbands are destroyed. My wives are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Right. Yes. And we encourage you to stick to the end. We're going to be giving you a lot of resources for you to use. And one of them will be ways that you can communicate um, these different love languages. So we just stay to the end. Make sure that you get uh, all those links that we that are going to give you valuable information. So And things like investing in resources, books. I remember... I was in a finance seminar or a seminar where people were trying to learn how to make a lot of money, how to do business and make money. And the person who was speaking asked a question. He said, how many of you have any, uh, you know, you're subscribed to uh, Fortune magazine or you are feeding on books and resources about money to understand the, the economy, the stock market, the real estate market. How many of you have resources that you, you are studying these things? And I didn't. You know, I just have theological books. Mm -hmm. And here I am with my, you know, I'm, I'm just into theology and Bible and pastoring and stuff. But I want to make, I want to make big money. I want to tap into the financial market but I have no education. I have no investment, uh, educational. I made no educational investment in that field. And yet here I am, I'm expecting uh, to know how the market works so I can tap in and benefit where that's not where my investment is. So I believe that everyone, every husband, if you're interested in being better, if you're interested in not being stuck, because some of us, we're just stuck. Uh, you haven't grown uh, since you've gotten married. You haven't improved. You're just going through life and time is passing. I encourage you, start to make investments mm -hmm. in your marriage and uh, you'll see uh, different kinds of results. Mm -hmm. Should we begin with a word of prayer and then jump in? Yes. Through? Okay. All right. I think we're warmed up now. I think so. So we're going to share a little bit and then we have a, we're going to spend, leave a lot of time for questions. So don't blog off, stay on. Um, some great questions we're going to be going through. All right. We're going to be, we're going to pray. Why don't you join hands with your wife right now mm -hmm. and uh, uh, hold that hand nice and tight. And we're going to touch and agree. The Bible says, if we touch and agree concerning anything, it shall be done. Mm -hmm. We know that there are uh, mm -hmm. needs mm -hmm represented here today. We know that there are marriages that are in different stages. Mm -hmm. There are some marriages right now that are on life support. There are some marriages uh, that are good, but uh, things are just kind of, uh, you're just going through the motions, you're just married, and uh, you need that grace, you need that spark, you need to improve and continue to grow uh, mm -hmm. to for your marriage to be all that God wants it to be. And so the Bible says, if two of us shall touch and agree concerning anything, mm -hmm. it shall be done. Because when we touch and agree in unity, Jesus says, I'm there in the midst. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, mm -hmm. our Lord, to grow in our relationship, to grow in our love one toward another, mm -hmm. to grow, Lord God, in our understanding so that we can glorify you mm -hmm. in our marriage and our marriage can respect the love between Christ and the church. Yes, so we believe, Lord, that transformation is taking place mm -hmm. as we look to you who created marriage. We receive by faith. Yes, Jesus made unto us wisdom yes, as it relates to our marriage. And I speak life and health yes. and healing healing and yes, deliverance Lord. and freedom yes, right now in these marriages Jesus. to the glory of God. And we yes, thank you Lord. for the anointed and grace 
-hmm. our Lord, that is flowing in this ministry. Yes. Our Lord, beginning, Lord, from what your servant started. Yes. Our Lord, under the gum tree, Lord, mm -hmm. that has brought so much life and healing. We thank you, Lord, that we have had an example in our ministry mm -hmm. of what a solid marriage is. And yes. we draw yes. from that anointing now yes. as we go forth in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. I am excited. I am going, how we're going to work this uh, tonight, it's going to be adventurous. And so we want you to just jump in. Uh, we want your comments. We want you to talk. We want you to engage. Uh, but we're going to add some tools to your tool belt. Uh, if all you have in your tool belt is a hammer, mm -hmm. then anything that needs fixing, the only thing that you can do is hit it with a hammer. Uh, but you, you want to have a different types of tools, uh, tools of precision uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that in any situation, uh, you are able to draw from the wealth of knowledge and experience to apply to that area that needs adjustment. And so maybe before you were fixing everything with a hammer. Now, by the end of this time, you're going to have some additional tools in your tool belt. One of the things that we've noticed as we're looking through uh, some of the needs that are represented here, uh, we see that although many people, everybody knows how to talk. Mm -hmm. People know how to talk, but very few know how to communicate. There's a difference between talking and communicating. There's a difference between talking and in the communication connecting that we grow in understanding. We grow in oneness. You can have a communication, you can have an interaction of communication in which you and your spouse move like this. Mm -hmm. You start to go further and further apart. Or if you're skilled, if you have the skill in communication, you can have a conversation where you're once apart and now you're drawing closer. You're drawing closer all through communication. It is so powerful. That's why the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Uh, the Bible says in James uh, chapter three that no human being can tame the tongue. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, we can uh, speak words that edify. Let me share with you a few verses right now because we're going to uh, address some communication issues and we're going to discover that some of us, we've been talking, but we haven't been communicating. We're going to learn uh, how to avoid uh, being living in the situation where we're walking on eggshells. Some of us, you know, in war, they have fields that are very dangerous fields because the enemy has planted landmines. So if you step here, there's going to be explosion and people will die. So many of us, our, our, our communication, the land in which we communicate is filled with landmines. So you know in dealing with your spouse, oh, I better not go there. I can't talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, if I touch that, he's going to get angry or she's going to get angry. And so you walk like you're walking on eggshells. You know, eggshells, they break easily. Mm -hmm. And so how do you walk on an eggshell without breaking it? Hmm. It's impossible. And so many of us, we live with the tension that we have to be careful of how we navigate in communication because anything is just going to set the relationship off. Some of us, uh, we're, we're just very silent. We don't talk much. We don't communicate much uh, because there are so many threats in the relationship that will trigger something negative. And we're going to learn how to uh, improve the communication in the marriage. 
Yes, we're talking about this kingdom marriage building or kingdom marriage in modern world. Yes. Communication is key. Absolutely important. All right. So I'm going to share some things and, you know, we're going to flow together and then we're going to need you to really lock in because we're going to unpack some things in your communication. We're going to we're going to get into your home. We're going to come into your home. We're going to get into your living room. We're going to get into your bedroom. And we're going to uh, we're going to explain some things and present some things. And you are going to see if you're discerning mm -hmm. what, what category your level of communication falls into. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about conflict because in any relationship, there will be conflict. Mm -hmm. There will be times of disagreement. There will be times where there's an opportunity for offense. There will be times where someone says the wrong thing, someone does the wrong thing mm -hmm. that triggers a negative environment in the relationship. And we're going to address that and show you how to deal with difficult situations where you have to have difficult conversations, but yet, even though you've had a difficult conversation, your relationship can draw closer rather than drawing apart. So um, I wanna start off by giving you some key verses. Uh, first verse is, you're familiar with, it's in Ephesians chapter four, verse 29, Ephesians 4, 29. Uh, what does the scripture say? You're familiar with it. Let no corrupt word or corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification that it might impart grace to the hearers. Let no corrupt communication, let no corrupt word come out of your mouth. As a believer, you have to be very careful with words because we understand that by faith, we know that the worlds were framed by the word of God. You were created in God's image and your words are seed. Your words are gonna produce a harvest, uh, whether good or bad your words are going to produce a harvest. And we talked about the importance of prophesying, speaking in the spirit versus speaking in the flesh. Let no communication proceed out of your mouth, but let your words impart grace. Uh, that's the word that we have for charisma or the gifts. Uh, let your words minister grace. That your words are bringing healing. Uh, your wife has a headache and when you start to speak, she gets healed because your word, there's so much grace, there's potency. Your words bring life, all right? Uh, the second scripture I wanna share with you is Philemon chapter one, verse six, that the sharing of your faith, we talked about this, that the sharing of your faith might become effective by acknowledging every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So we wanna practice this, sharing the faith. Final scripture is in Colossians chapter four. Colossians chapter four, verse number six. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation here. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Mm -hmm. Communication is the right response. It's a dance. We're going back and forth. I'm saying something, she's saying something, and you're constantly responding. Some of us, things go in a negative direction because someone did not have the right response. They had the wrong response. Maybe you responded out of your pain. Maybe you responded because something happened in the past that has nothing to do with your spouse, but it triggers you and then you respond in a negative way, which causes 
a, a bad situation to get worse. There's grace for the right response that in a moment you got the right word. You, you didn't even think. Uh, and that's why it's so important for us to spend time in the presence to ask God to create in us a clean heart for our of the abundance of the heart. Whatever is in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. Uh, so if I can, I want to talk about uh, some benefits of healthy communication. All right. So this is how you are going to be benefited. Your marriage is going to benefit. You're going to grow uh, just by mastering communication, just by becoming a good communicator. Mm -hmm. You'll see change in your marriage. Mm -hmm. You respond to things differently. You uh, create atmospheres. You change the situation from being very tense to being open and free. What are some of the benefits? Communication increases understanding. Communication, healthy communication, it increases intimacy. You want to have a good sex life? Mm -hmm. Enjoy sex? Mm -hmm. Learn to communicate better. Uh, it increases effective conflict resolution. There's some fights that have been going on for 10, 15, 20 years simply because you have no skills. I, I, you know, I'm sorry if I'm saying things that hurt your feeling, but we don't have a lot of time, so I have to speak the truth in love. Simply because you have no skill, you're dealing with something for 20 years. But if you have the skill of communication, healthy communication, between the two of you, uh, you can have, you, you can resolve that conflict that's been going on for a long time. Uh, increases satisfaction in your sex life. Not just in intimacy, but in your sex life. When we talk about that, uh, communication in sex. <laughs> uh, it improves the atmosphere in your home. Improves financial stewardship. Mm -hmm. Wow. We had some questions regarding the finances and yeah. people are frustrated. Uh, but if we learn communication, there are financial dividends associated with healthy communication in your marriage. Let the church say amen. amen. Increases productivity. Uh, God has brought you together for a purpose. Uh, not just to enjoy yourselves, but it's it, it brings blessing to others. It brings productivity to your children and uh, at your workplace. What's happening in your home? It increases productivity just by growing in your communication skills. Promotes the power of agreement. Limits frustration in marriage. You're married and you're supposed to have a happy and successful marriage, but you're angry. Three days ago, you woke up angry. You know why? Because you and your spouse don't have this tool of communication, healthy communication. But if you get this, the frustration, you don't have to walk around angry. You don't have to yell at the kids. You don't have to uh, be around the house not smiling. Uh, you can enjoy uh, just by healthy communication. Limits frustration. Opens the doors to hearts so that there can be real connection and bonding. Opens trust and allows for true intimacy. All right. But what I learned, I remember in college, I took oral communication, and they told me that there, there is noise in communication. I could say something, but my wife hears something different. Uh, it, they're, 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 it's noise. Sometimes I'm amazed, and maybe some of you can testify that you've been in situations and your spouse is telling you something that she heard you say or he heard you say, and you're listening to that, and you're like, where did you get that? How did you interpret that based on what I said? That's not what I was saying at all. And this is, and they've been upset for days. 
because you said this, and this is something you never said, but that's what they heard. So um, there are some filters. Even when you're speaking, you can use the best words. You can be eloquent. You can have the right tone. Do all that and still your spouse can hear something totally different. These are filters. Mm -hmm. All right, so what are some of the filters? My heart. My heart can be a filter. Uh, my heart is gonna affect what comes out of my mouth and also affects how I hear. Yeah. I think even with that, if your heart is sick, you know, maybe you were you were disappointed in marriage, you're feeling discouraged, or maybe if you've been upset and angry, frustrated at your spouse, um, because the heart, your heart condition will determine what you're going to hear. If you're one of those who's kind of checked out of the marriage already, and you're constantly seeing the negative in your spouse, anything that your spouse said is going to come through the negative filter, and you're going to interpret it as, some, as something negative, as an attack, and then your defenses go up, or you're gonna you know, interpret it as foolishness, you're not even going to listen to. So your heart, you've got to guard your heart for out of it flow the issues of life. So if your heart is sick, if your heart is not well, your heart has been broken, just know that anything that's said is going to, is, is anything that's said is going to, to hear it differently from what is actually being said. So you've got to always factor that, always check your heart. The moment you start to interpret what your spouse is saying in a negative way, where's my heart? Am I focusing on the negative here? Am I now seeing only, only things that are deficient, not, not only seeing anything good? Because if that's where you are- Because yeah, sometimes they're defensive. Yeah. I'm, I'm hurt, I've had this issue. Yeah. And if I feel or I perceive correctly or incorrectly that this is coming, now my walls yes. start to come up. Yes, like here or here. She I'm, ready, I'm, I'm ready now. Let's, let's, you know. Yeah, here it goes again. Again, sometimes the issues have not been resolved, but yeah. your heart condition is so important uh, in communication. Family background. Yep. Oh, that's huge. I got, I mean, I just shared with uh, the pastors, I believe, uh, in Zimbabwe, or it might have been the men, I forgot which one, a funny situation with me and Apostle Steve. Years ago, when we, when his children, you know, his son was a little boy, he was trying to explain to him the culture. He was living in America, but trying to explain the culture, uh, the Zimbabwe culture to his son. And I had lived in Zimbabwe, but I didn't speak the language. But I was there, part of the culture. And as I was uh, courting my wife and things like that, and early in our marriage, I started to learn that she had little sisters. They're grown now. Everyone's grown, but they were little uh, teenagers. And then uh, I, I believe uh, Ethanim was you know, maybe nine years old or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when I was introduced to they said, this is, this is my Nini. What's, what's my Nini? Oh, that's, that's your little wife. That's little Nini, my little wife. And then when we were at Waterfalls, those of you who knows Waterfalls is a headquarters there, uh, Fiona's uncle on her mother's side, her mother's brother used to live there. Uh, and some of you might remember if you were a part of the ministry, Sto uh, Baba Stole. When Apostle Steve introduced me, <laughs> oh, that's that's a respected uncle. That's an uncle. That's that's a that's a that's an uncle we respect. And so that's in my mind. Nini, little. So this is communication. This is where as the, this is a funny illustration. But when he was at my house with his son. He told his son to call me Nini, and I got angry <laughs> because I'm just who this little boy call this this small nephew he called me calling me little <laughs> calling me Nini 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 <laughs> oh no oh no oh. and I I was getting I, I was ready to throw down and you're not gonna have you're not gonna have this boy disrespect me call me Nini I am so cool <laughs> so. <laughs> 
what happened? I'm angry because of different cultures. Now, even though you speak the same language, because you come from different families, mm -hmm. you speak the same language, but there's a different culture in each family. So there are certain things, certain, certain things that can be interpreted a certain way in your family and in your family, they wouldn't get upset. Right. Uh, but your wife or your husband does not come. They, they have a different background. And even though you speak the same language, there's noise in the communication and there can be confusion. So these things are all filters. There's all, all different kinds of challenges, filters by which we affect how we speak and the filter affects how we hear mm -hmm. things. Um, so there, there are, you know, there, there are many challenges and many filters in communication. So when we're talking about communication, you've got to factor in the filter. You've got to factor in the fact that it's going to take some work because you might be hearing things differently. And when you're speaking, what's in your heart, uh, there's a challenge from what's in your heart being communicated. What does your father say in the book? Hearing and listening can be a problem. It's a problem. Even in the home. <laughs> Hearing and listening could be a problem. Yeah. Even in the home. Uh, so um, that, that there it is. It's, it's a challenge. Absolutely. And I think, you know, and we'll come to this in a minute, but even just your personality style can also be can also be um, a factor. And we'll mm -hmm. talk about this in a minute. We talk about uh, physical health. When you're not feeling well, you're not going to be able to hear well. You're not going to be able to communicate well, nor are you going to be able to hear well. So you got to, again, take uh, take note of these things. So sometimes when you're not feeling well, that's not the time, or your spouse is not feeling well, that's not the time to bring up uh, difficult conversations or important decisions that need to be made. You might need to wait for that a little bit. Uh, of course, gender differences, men and women, we hear things totally different. Oh, yeah. I mean, there is, there's, there is, it's just that we hear things uh, totally different. You know, men will hear things and speak. They're speaking, you, men speaking, I'm going to speak. Bullet, bullet points. Bullet points. And you also hear bullet points. You speak in bullet points and you also hear things in bullet points. Point. So, so my wife is talking, it's like da 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 and then I hear a word. Da 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 da, -da. hear another word. It's it, there's a lot of words in <laughs> my attention span. I have to really focus, make sure, because I can only do one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. So when she's talking to me, and if she's saying something important, I I can't be on my phone, I can't be looking around, I can't be watching TV. If she's talking to me, I have to stop what I'm doing, put down what I'm reading, stop everything, and just look at her and focus on what she's saying. Yes, and I think this is, this is also really key um, for I guess men and women. But I must speak to the women. If you want to, if you want to communicate something important to your to your husband, you need to ask for his undivided attention. Like, hey, when can I have your undivided attention for however long that you, you need it for? So that when you are communicating, he's hearing you, he's listening to you, there's eye contact. Make sure there's always eye contact. That way uh, you guys are on the same wavelength and you're able to communicate. But what happens sometimes we come and we just, you know, communicate important information when, you know, if my husband's on his phone or he's watching the game or watching the news and I communicate important information, he's not going to hear it. What about what about when you commute or overload? Oh, <laughs> not one. Yeah. I, 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 I'm about to help you brothers out. Okay. I have, yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you're communicating, and it's it's this this uh, well. because women again, our minds are so we beautifully and wonderfully made. You know the way God created us, so we can be communicating on different channels. We can have twenty tabs open. If you see my computer, sometimes it's embarrassing, but I can have twenty tabs that are open. But I know exactly what's happening on each tab, and so sometimes I'm opening this tab and communicating, opening that tab and communicating, and it can become overwhelming. Now, so see, uh, my when, when I'm listening, I, I have one box at a time. So it's one box. I close that box, open up another box, and I can talk with. Her. But she's able to have all these boxes going on at the same time, and I don't know. Okay, do we stop talking about this? Are we? And I can get frustrated. 
And these are the gender differences that we're talking about that we honestly have to factor in. So now for me as a wife, I've learned, I wasn't always like this. I have, I have a lot of things I need to talk about. So, and you're going wow. to listen, right? To but say. now it's like, okay, now that I know how a man's brain works, I need to be, I need to honor that difference and not say, well, this is just the way I am. You need to do it. No, I need to honor that difference. And so I have one issue. We communicate the issue. Now I'm intentionally saying, I'm switching subjects. So now he knows this box is closed. Yep. I can go to the box. And then, and then you can do that. And I can always switch different subjects, but you know, it, it, then it's easier for him to listen and to stay there and, and engage with me. So you got to factor in those differences. And Sometimes not, I have a very short attention span. Right. I got to keep it moving. <laughs> right. And, and so then yeah. that's where that communication will come in. Like, hey, right today, I, you know, right now, I only have the bandwidth for, for, for one topic. You know, maybe because there are other things that are happening. It could be health things, health things. It could be work things. Whatever is happening, just say, hey, I've bandwidth for one for one topic right now, and you discuss it. Now, wife, don't get offended. He's at least giving you uh, honest feedback so that you're not frustrated. So, and sometimes you need to take breaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. Sometimes, yeah, because <laughs> she she might be able to talk longer, yeah. but I'm able to really give the best one hundred percent undivided attention, I might need a break. Right, and, and this is a fact too, the, the gender difference. Women use twice as many words than men. So we have a lot to say. We can talk all day. I mean, there are times I'm driving in the car and I'm just talking the whole way. And then I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing all the talking because I have a lot of words. So he allows me to use my words and he, he just listen, allow me to talk. So some men say, well, women talk too much. God has given us all this words to use you know we need we need them in order in order to run our households in order to you know uh even work and run businesses we need all those words so as, as long as i don't have to um it's not connected to things that i am assigned to do or i'm i'm missing uh and she wants to talk that that's fine that's because i know that she's happy right. when she's talking talking she's good it's only when she's too quiet that i know something's wrong right so yeah. when she's talking i could be driving and she can just talk the whole way and i'm good yeah and then uh, this is we also we just uh, help with communication. Um, so I'm gonna talk to the wives. It could be in the husband. But I'm gonna talk to the wives. If you're wanting feedback from your from your husband, you want to ask him. So husband, let me start with the husbands a little okay. bit. If your wife is talking and um, she's sharing things that are happening in a, in her life at work with her family and things like that, um, just listen. Just listen. All right. Don't give her any solutions unless she asks for those solutions. Now, wife, if you want solutions, if you want some input, some feedback from your husband, then ask him for it. Because after today, he's not going to give you unsolicited feedback. So now it's now it's up to you now to say, hey, I need some feedback on this. Or, hey, I'm just venting. So now, when I'm just venting, you know you don't have to catch on every word that I'm saying. That's right. Now, sometimes we don't like to see our wives upset. Mm -hmm. And because we're solution-oriented, I mean, do you want to stay upset or do you want to know what to do? Sometimes I just want to be upset. I just want to vent. And so <laughs> vent. And then after I vent, if I want a solution, then I'm going to ask. Brothers, it doesn't have to make sense to us. <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense, my brothers. Uh, but yeah. You just relate according to knowledge. <laughs> but if you're able to do that, it's going to really solve. It's going to really limit a lot of this. Um, when we have a problem, we want it solved. We want solutions. Mm -hmm. We want to move on. Right. Some people, they want to stay there for a little while longer right. and, and feel everything there is to feel about that. Thing. And that's how that's how we are processing things, you know, feeling now. Live and let live. On the flip side, sometimes the husband can be sharing information and the wife listen. Then you can ask, do you want any feedback? Because the husband, sometimes you just want to share what's happening. But now we want to, you know, because we are we are also very protective of our spouses. Then we want to come in and save the day. And we need to do this. You need to do that. You need to, you know. Well, I can't think of a time if I'm sharing something uh, that needs action. If I'm sharing it, let's get some, let's get some work done. I'm, yeah, I can't think. Maybe, but what? just to share, just to, just to feel and have emotions. And I just want you to. No, it's, it's not necessarily you feeling it, but you could be sharing something that you might even have a solution, but I'm not waiting long enough to even listen for that. You know, I'm just saying, oh, you need to do this. I'm jumping in I'm, and I'm helping you fix it and solve the problem. You, by the time you share it with me, you probably have it figured out or 
You Everyone's different. If you, if you come up with a better solution than I had in the beginning, then that, that's a success. So you open it with the, after you've shared your, your, your solution. Yeah. Right. So, so there's that kind of just staying in there and listening. Um, to even the, in the home. Even in the home. <laughs> okay. So, and then technology is another major factor that we have to talk about. Um, that this can really be a communication uh, barrier that we have to, um, first of all, texting, important information. Um, there's a lot that's missed in the communication yep. there. Um, communicating important information where your spouse is on the phone or, um, you know. Watching the game. Watching distracted their technology. Yeah. That can really cause um, a lot of issues. So again, you want to eliminate the distractions when you are doing the communication. Um, that's good. Yeah, I'm gonna do a commercial break very soon. I'm gonna talk about Matthew 16 in a minute. All right, <laughs> we'll do a commercial break a little bit. So, um, hopefully, this is helpful. Um, you know, so you guys, please continue to talk to us on on the chat. Um, so, I, I want to highlight maybe some um, the types of communication type, type types of. Um, I'm gonna I'm share my screen a little bit. I want to talk about a little bit about the tortoise and the hare. Uh, we're, uh, are we dealing with just communication or with being specifically with some conflict resolution things yet? I think just understanding. Understanding. Okay. The, the different the different uh, uh, communication styles okay. that, that people have um, might be helpful. So, oh, I was able to share before. Am I able to share my screen? Oh, there we go. I'm going to share. So just as, as we are um, talking here. I'm gonna start off with. Um, right, so, so do we need to close out the Zoom and the, you have that no. message in the back? No, I don't need to share here. Okay. So I, I'm gonna start off with. Um, so it doesn't pick up anything else that's on the screen. Just pick up the screen. Oh, okay. Okay. Are we seeing it? It's still coming. Yes, we can. You can see the screen. Oh, which one can we see? Uh, do you see the one that says tortoise in the hair? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. So I uh, uh, just thought this would be just an important part. I'm just going to pass through this very quickly, uh, talking about the tortoise and the hair. Um, because you, you might be a tortoise, or you might be married to a hair, or you know, a hair married to a tortoise. This is, can kind of just help you understand some of the challenges that may come. Um, in communication, and so uh, talking about this. So, if you're a tortoise, you are likely you are unlikely to share information. You kind of keep everything closed in, and this can really be frustrating to your spouse when um, when they're wanting you to share information, wanting you to talk. So, I just I just understanding this is this is who I am. Uh, this is how your spouse needs to understand. And more you're more unlikely to share information. So things might be happening, uh, changes might be happening in your schedule but you may not communicate that. Uh, so just being aware of that. Um, can you guys still see the screen? Can you guys still see the screen? Yes, yes we can. Okay, all right. Um, and then a hair, you, 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 um, you spontaneously share information. You know, you're very quick to share information. That's not, you don't have challenge doing that. Um, then a tortoise is you need time to ponder responses to questions. So this usually happens with, with husbands, but it can happen with the wife, where a wife will come and ask, hey, I need information on this. And um, you say, I need information on this. And you, um, you, need, time, you need some time to, to think that you paused it. So the screen sharing is paused. Oh, it is. Is that correct? You're not seeing anything else, right? You're seeing us? Uh, we're still on the same screen. Okay. Okay. Oh, great. Are you seeing again the tortoise? Okay. Um, it looks very different. Uh, so I just understand it. Maybe your husband is a tortoise. He needs some time to ponder and think about it before he gives you responses. So you've got to be aware of that. So, and hares are fast paced in their questions. You know, very quick. It's usually the women, very fast paced in their responses and questions. Um, another difference, uh, the tortoise, so you withdraw when emotions and conflict are present. So you see, okay, this conversation. Uh, it's becoming difficult. You are quick to withdraw. Um, this is because you're a tortoise. You you know quick to withdraw, and that's a protective measure for you. You don't want to be engaged in um, in difficult conversations. So just being aware of that. So and, in in communication, uh, I'm just trying to figure out which one am I. 
most men will be will be um tortoises. I guess it's not gonna map on perfectly, but okay. most men and women are likely to be for the more fast paced responses, but it could be different. It's it's not necessarily okay. based on gender. It could just be who you are. So I you know, so I see I tend to respond here. a little slower. Yes. When you're saying things. Yes. And so okay. I have to know not to be frustrated because that's just how you are wired. I hear okay. a lot of women say, oh, my husband, they're slow in making decisions. Well, because he's probably a, a tortoise, yeah, they do more of the hair. I don't like to rush and make bad decisions. And, I need to process. I don't like to just say things. So I need to sometimes slow down. And, but, you know, for me, I'm a hair. I'm, I'm quick to. So maybe you're not taking, you know, considering those, the risk. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm just going ahead and I, yeah. my hair is just, is just going forward. Okay. You know, um, and so. This so let us know if you're if you see your tortoise or your hair. hair. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, as we're talking, just put in the chat. Am I a tortoise? Are you a tortoise or a hair? Uh, would be interesting to just to see. And so, based on these based on these um, differences, and I have to scroll up a little bit to see. But are you a tortoise or are you a hair? Um, it's just I, again, this can help you understand your spouse and not get frustrated. So if you're a hair, you're frustrated with your tortoise. Take it. Why? Why is he? Or why is she not? Why is she slow in making decisions? Well, because this is how she's wide now, or how he's wide. Think things through. Yes, absolutely. Slow and steady wins the race. So now, just because this is how God has wired us, does not mean that we can't grow and we can't change. You know, our father always used to say, you're not a car, you can change, right? And so tortoises, because you tend to, you know, unlikely to share information, things might change, and you may just not think about it about sharing information. Um, you need to now learn to stick out your neck a little bit by sharing information. Uh, so this not, doesn't come naturally for you, but the moment things shift in your schedule, things are happening with your family, you, you know, thing, whatever is, is happening, you're making more, um, uh, you, you make you, you're more intentional. You see somebody is, is, is there, the hair fronts with the tortoise. You've got to be appreciated. This is what they are. So, but this is what a tortoise can do. You know, you can now learn to stick out your neck and do something different uh, because your hair needs you to be able to communicate uh, information. You hear so much conflict, like, well, things change and my husband or my wife didn't tell me, they just did their own thing. And that's because you could be married to a tortoise there. And as a, as a tortoise, you wanna also be verbal about your needs instead of withdrawing. So uh, ask for what you need in the relationship because the tortoise might just say, well, you know, I'm not sure if I can ask for my needs or I don't want to be bothered. Or if I ask, maybe this might be in conflict. So you want to stick out your neck and communicate and then also be verbal. Use your words. Use your words to ask for, for what you need. Uh, initially, you may not be, you know, your, your, your hair partner may not understand it, but the more you do it, the more like, oh, my tortoise is beginning to communicate more. I need to, I need to listen. And so now for the hair, if that is you and that is me, I need to slow it down mm -hmm. and breathe, slow it down, stop firing. I need to stop firing questions, firing, you know, information and things like that. Because my daughter says, overwhelmed. That's why my daughter is going back in the shell, you know, because this <laughs> is too much. It's too much. So I need to slow down and breathe. Yes. I need to, again, we talked about this already. Give my partner a warning if I'm going to discuss uh, something that's, um, give my partner a warning if I'm going to discuss something important um, that I need a response for. Sometimes like, hey, can you let me know by tomorrow or can you let me know in about an hour, you know, this particular decision. So mm -hmm. you want to give them a heads up, give them time to think and process and not expect immediate um, immediate response because the tortoise is just not there. So um, kind of both of you have work to do. Both of you have work to do in order for you to kind of come to the place where you are communicating well with each other. So there's some homework for you. Uh, what can you do differently if you are a tortoise? How can you start being intentional about communicating if you are here? How can you start by slowing down and um, being patient when you ask for something, when there's a decision that's been made, uh, being patient. So uh, is there anything that you can do? Let's put it in the chat. Is there anything that you can do uh, based on this? Somebody's a mix of their heart was, that's funny. Yeah, it, it could be, certainly be a mix, but um, yeah. Um, let me stop sharing the screen. Okay, have I stopped sharing the screen? Wait, you can really see. Yes. Okay, all right. So hopefully that was, in, that was helpful for you, kind of understanding. They can eliminate again or minimize frustrations uh, when you are, when you are um, in, in communication. And so that's one. 
Um, the other thing we wanted to share, again, um, some some basic things. Do you want to go to the conference thing? Or we're talking more, more basic communication. Wait, 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 wait. How, how are we doing time wise? Um, so we're doing good. Okay. Doing good. So, do you want to go and do a role play for the? Okay. All right. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of role play here. Oh, this is uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to shift the button. I'm in my head. That's okay. Good. I'm in my head. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right. So we want to move toward um, developing communication skills and you being able to see yourself as a husband, as a wife. We need to be able to self-assess. Some of us, we really can't see ourselves, how we come across in communication. Uh, there, and I want to deal with some matters of conflict, how we do conflict that we can do conflict well, that we can have issues and discuss and resolve it well. That's the difference between a couple that is able to grow in their relationship versus a couple that tends to drift apart. Often it comes down to these skills of how we're able to deal with issues because when we deal with issues, we can sometimes eliminate them, but if we don't deal with them, what starts off as a small problem grows into a bigger problem. So there, there are some skills. There are some things that we have to be able to see in ourselves. And hopefully in this exercise, we want to throw a scenario out and we want you to kind of watch how we deal with it. Should I share a little bit of my body before? Some yeah, maybe okay. so they can identify some of the patterns. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen again, and hopefully this, you can really see when the screen is shared. Okay. So, what is this? You see the screen that's being shared. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, some of you might have, might, have, might have heard. The, oh, here we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, some of you might have heard these, the four horsemen um, of the apocalypse, the four horsemen of, of the apocalypse. It's in the revelation. In the revelation, right. These um, studies have shown that if they are present in your marriage, your marriage is not going to do well. One of them being one of being the worst, that if that's there, your marriage is living in ICU and you are going to need some intensive work uh, being done. But these, um, there's a guy who who done who studied couples for many years, and he can predict by I think it's a 94 or 95% accuracy if couples are going to divorce, if these things are present and they don't work on them. Sometimes they can be present, you will do the work, you're good. But if you're not working on these things, they are going to, they can spell, that's why they call, they call it the apocalypse. They can spell the end. Yeah, your, apocalypse means the end of the age. Right. So it, it can um, spell yeah. the end of your of your marriage. So we have a, we have a sheet here so you can see uh, visually. So we're not just talking about you seeing. And after this, we're going to practice it a little bit, but just so uh, we, are on, we are on the same page. And so these, the four that are listed there are defensive uh, criticism, defensiveness, stonewalling and contempt. So contempt being one that if it's present, by all means you need to make the change immediately. Otherwise this marriage is going down, is going down the going down the drain and it's spelling the end of this of this marriage. So the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So let's talk about the first one is criticism. So we're gonna do a little bit of education here. Uh, so just bear with us and then we'll go and practice uh, together. And let me share the kind of things that are being taught here. Uh, these are things that we've put into practice. We've had counseling sessions with couples who were on the brink. And it's because these things were present and they did not know how to deal with them. So it's one thing for us to talk about communication, but if you don't have the skills, you just can't do it. Uh, you're not skilled and you just it's too much of a mountain. And so we're going to start to break some things down. Hopefully, as you look at this, look and see, are any of these things present mm -hmm. in our communication? Think about those difficult things, those difficult conversations, 
those things that you're not even talking about. And you know, if you talk about them, it's going to be a blow up. Uh, you know, the in-law situation, the uh, situation uh, that that is affecting you deeply concerning your relationship. Think about these things and see if you are able to apply any of these uh, horsemen, if you see if even in a small way, if they're present in your marriage, okay? And you can see that these are communication patterns like that are destructive that you need to be aware of. So the first one being criticism, uh, and you guys can see this uh, on the screen here. So that's when you are making a problem in the relationship life about a character flaw in your in your in your in your spouse. So it's not not so much about the issue, but you are attacking your spouse. Um, and the reason why you are being critical again, there's always a reason. Uh, so we don't want to minimize. I say just don't do it. There's a reason why you're doing it because your needs are not being met. It does not make it right, but it's it's important to understand why you are being critical. So simply your needs are not being met. So what's the sign of that? The always, the never, you. Um, you should, always do this. Yeah, you always do it. Every time, um, those really those words should really be eliminated out of your conversation because the truth of the matter is there's always an exception. It's not always, it's not never. So just know when you're using those words, you are now being critical uh, to your to your spouse. And you're not dealing with the issue. You're, no. you, you're, you're not dealing with the issue here because the issue is whatever it is that has happened or whatever what was said or whatever was done, we're not talking about the issue. We're now attacking the individual, we're attacking the spouse. And I guess what are you saying that in these matters, we need to separate the issue right. from the spouse. Right, and that's the antidote. So with these, we're giving you what the issue is, but we're also going to give you the antidote, okay. the, the solution, and as to how you can um, eliminate these things in your in your uh, communication. So the antidote is uh, talking about needs to solve the problem in the relationship. So you're, you're talking about the issue and not the person. Okay. You're always focusing what is the issue at hand. What the problem are we trying to solve? So when you do that then it's easy for you to stick there and not start attacking uh, your spouse and say, you always do this, you, 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 you. The moment you hear you, our defenses go up. And are we the only ones? The moment yeah. it's like you, yeah. defenses go up. It's, it's like human nature. Your defenses are going to go up. up. Right. And so the key words that you want to use for, in order to eliminate criticism, the key words that you want to use are, I need, I feel, I think. My perspective, I think, I feel, I need. So you are, you are, you are using the I statements, and you're not using the you statements. I statements is like you know, I'm owning what I'm owning, what I'm owning, and I think, I feel, feelings are indicators. They're not, they're not facts. You know? Indicators, but not, not dictators. dictators. Yeah. So I can. Feel Let me say it again. Feelings, your feelings, the hurt, the pain, those are indicators, but they don't dictate how you talk to one another, how you treat one another. We walk by faith and not by sight or feelings or our senses. Mm -hmm. So feelings are indicators. We don't ignore them, but they don't control us. Right. Um, so this is all the channel. So that's number one, criticism. Using I statements and sticking to the issue and not the person. Then defensiveness okay. is hearing a complaint and disregarding its validity or your responsibility. So I share like, Hey, um, I feel unloved when you know when you don't leave when you don't um leave, this is a simple one in our home when, when you don't leave the light op light on for me uh, before I go to bed. So a defensive statement would be like, "Oh, here you are complaining again. I can never do anything right." Here you are. So you're being defensive instead of just hearing a complaint and validating that. Oh, I'm sorry. You know. So this is the antidote, but. You, the reason why you're being defensive is you're perceiving um, an attack or criticism or a, a sense of being misunderstood. So, so just here, uh, in explaining that, in our marriage, my wife, uh, if she's not in bed, she wants the uh, at least one of the lights on. You need to see where I'm going. <laughs> All right. If I if I am wanting to sleep, I can't sleep. I need every, I need everything pitch black black for me to sleep properly. Mm -hmm. That's how I am. I like everything. If I want to sleep, I need the lights off. And I don't need the lights on. It's my bedroom. So I, I, I pretty much know 
It's only a few steps. I know how to get to my bed. So I don't need my wife. If you want to go to sleep, just turn off the lights. That's fine. Don't don't keep the light on for me. I don't need you to do that. I can't. I can do that. But yeah. So if I, if I was to share that, you can hear it as a complaint. And then so some of the signs that the defensiveness is present in your communication, but you do too. You I do this, you do it too. Hey, can you please do this? Can you please not spend money on a sort of a budget? Well, I spend it because last time you spend money too. So that's defensiveness. Or you know, you're trying to over explain something. Well, your spouse simply said, hey, let's stick to a budget. But now you're explaining like, well, you know, sometimes I just need to spend money. And you know, why can't I spend money? I'm working too. All this stuff is this defensiveness that's, uh, that's present. And so the antidote is validating uh, the parts of the claim, complaint that makes sense. So, hey, can you please leave the light on? Okay, yes, I hear you. You, you want to leave the lights on so you can see where yes. you go. So you validate, you're not minimizing it, dismissing it like, oh, here you go, or women are like this, or men are like this, here you go again. All this stuff, is that's defensiveness. And if that's present, you need to now make sure that you are, when your spouse brings something up to you, validate and listen. You may not all, you may not necessarily agree with everything that they say, but you've got to validate it. Like, I hear you, I hear what you're saying. And then you can discuss maybe your perspective, your own, uh, your, your side of things, but you want to not, you want to get rid of defensiveness. So some of the things, key words that you can use, uh, that makes sense. I hear you. Well, yeah. what, what she's sharing right now, validate as we go on the lesson, just keep that word in mind because that is an important part of communication. Mm -hmm. Validate. Just right. you can continue, but right. mm -hmm. I just want to give them that hint. So with defensiveness, you're taking responsibility. You're not throwing it back because sometimes a spouse will share something and need that they have a complaint, something that's bothering them. And it's easy with defensiveness if there is to turn around and make it about them rather than about the, rather than, than taking responsibility for, for those actions. So in order for you to eliminate defensiveness, take responsibility, wife, husband, take responsibility. There's always enough fault for you, you know, there's always enough, um, yeah, enough fault in, in, in any communication where I can take responsibility. Maybe the way that I'm listening, the way that I'm communicating, my body language, whatever it is, take responsibility and say, I'm sorry. When somebody, when your spouse shares something with you, don't be defensive. Defensiveness, again, is something that will bring an end to a relationship. And defensiveness really is a sign of immaturity. I hate to say that, but it's a sign of immaturity. So we, in marriages, we have a lot of little girls. We have a lot of little boys. You know, they don't know how to handle, um, you know, somebody else expressing what they need. And so say, I'm sorry. Take responsibility for your actions. Be quick to do that. Um, then stonewalling, this is withdrawing or disengaging in the midst of an important conversation. So here you are having a discussion. One of you just goes on and stops talking. Yeah. And sometimes you can even walk away. And here you are trying to have this important discussion and this wall goes up, done. No longer wanting to communicate. I'm no longer listening to you. Right, I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm shutting down. Yeah. Uh, the body language and all these things yeah. communicate. <sighs> Mm -hmm. rolling the eyes. Now, the reason why you're doing that is because physiologically, you're overwhelmed. You're starting to feel yourself getting heated up. You're starting to feel yourself getting angry. You're starting to feel yourself being in a place where you're not going to be, uh, you're going to lose your self-control. And so sometimes you do that. The reason why you do that is, is, is because you are feeling overwhelmed and you, know, and you don't want to say something that you're going to regret or even hopefully not do something that you're going to regret. So, and just understanding the reason why. So some of some of the signs are I'm done here or no words at all. You know, I'm done here, I'm done talking, I'm done. Or you just walk away and you just remove yourself from the situation while your spouse is trying to talk to you. That's stonewalling. And then of course, that's not a healthy way of communication. So the antidote for this one, when you start feeling yourself getting angry, getting heated up physiologically, you starting to get uh, angry about to say or do something that you're going to regret, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to take a note here. Do you know what happens in your body when you're starting to get upset? Put that in the chat. Do you know? Yeah, because God has put an alarm in all of our bodies. Mm -hmm. God has put in an alarm. So for some people, they'll start sweating. For some people, will start getting a headache. 
for some people start feeling tension in 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 hands in arms you know the heart rate the heart rate is a big one it's a big indicator like oh, where whatever else is going to come out of my mouth is not going to be good so can you can you identify when you are getting upset what happens to your body you know some people's stomachs become really tight and you know start feeling pain in the stomach and so God has given us this alarm system that we need to be aware of. Yeah, see, most people are not aware. It's not just aware. happening and they don't self-assess. They're just, wh whatever it is, they're so consumed by the feelings. They're not aware of themselves to say, what, I'm starting to get angry. Mm -hmm. um, the rational part of my brain mm -hmm. is drifting to the back. And the irrational part, the part that's not thinking about the consequences the is starting the impulsive part is starting to come to the forefront. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you, you know, uh, put in the chat, you know, do you, do you know? Do you know? If you, if you don't take anything away, anything else away, hopefully you take a lot. Be, go and assess. Be, 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 um, you want to investigate, like, what's happening in my body when I'm getting upset? Because that's an indicator that, oh, I need to slow things down, or I need to sometimes just breathe. So, the antidote for stonewalling, don't walk away, don't shut down and say, I'm not talking about this anymore, I'm done. No, that's not a way of, of communicating. What you want to do is like, you know, sometimes just taking a deep breath in, like, just to relax yourself. You know, sometimes you can just um, tense some of the muscles in your body and just release, you know, sometimes just simple things like just really tensing and then- yeah, maybe just, maybe Sometimes just keep on breathing. Yeah. Just usually when you, when you, yeah. even when, uh, you were giving birth yeah. and the body wants when you're in pain mm -hmm. and then we, when we're pain, either physical or emotional, we tend to tense up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just, just breathing, breathing. Yeah. helps to regulate what's going on in our body. It's amazing how many times we're, not, we're actually not breathing. So the antidote is to use self-soothing techniques. That's so again, just breathing. Or uh, one thing that you can say is, hey, I need a break. Can I take a time out? You know, I need a break. And all you need really is 20 minutes. Now, last time we taught this, <laughs> we sent the couple with this teaching and they messed it up. Because we said, if you feel yourself getting angry and getting flooded, you can take a time out. So this couple, uh, and they said we can use them as an example. Yeah. I've never seen this before. <laughs> but the husband and wife were, were now having problems in communication and they were getting upset. And so they wanted to apply this teaching to what happens. And so the husband said to the wife, you're on timeout. <laughs> Hold up. You can't put your spouse on timeout. Right. You put yourself on timeout. Right. You can say, I need a time. You can't say, you're on timeout. <laughs> right. So yeah, please. That was, that was funny. Um, yeah. So, you know, you start feeling that, that, um, that, that activity in your body, time to take a time out say don't and, put your spouse on time out right you can put your spouse there so you put yourself in time out and studies have shown that all you need is 20 minutes 20 30 minutes at the most that you can go and calm down do some deep breathing it's not time for you to go get on the phone and talk to somebody else uh, you know it's time for you to go be quiet be reflective and calm your body down so you can come back to that conversation so it happens it happens in communication because we're human beings and we are trying to work on our salvation with fear and tempering. Yes, you're going to get upset when your spouse is saying some difficult things and maybe you're not feeling heard or you know, you're feeling attacked. Yes, that's going to happen. You're going to start feeling things in your body, but it's your responsibility to calm yourself down. It's not your spouse's responsibility yes. to, calm, to calm you down. It's, it's your responsibility. So take a time out, 20 minutes, ask for a time out, and if your spouse, if your spouse asks you for a timeout, you have to grant them the time out. You can't say, well, we have to finish this first. No, we can we have to finish. No. If they ask for a timeout, you have to grant them that timeout because ultimately you're wanting to solve the issue. You're not trying to be right or you're not trying to be the one who has all the answers. You're trying to solve a particular issue. So yes. give your spouse a yeah. timeout and then come out, come back. Now, what we say is if you are the one who's asking for a timeout, 20 minutes, don't go for 24 hours or two days and three days and never come back, right? That's not fair to your spouse. That's, that's abusing uh, this privilege of taking a timeout. So if you are the one who asks for a timeout, you need to be the one to come back and say, I'm back. Can we continue the conversation? 
right? Don't let the one, you know, you've gone on time out, now it's 48 hours, now your spouse has to come back and say, can we continue? That's not fair. If you ask for a timeout, it's your responsibility. Again, 20 minutes is what you need. Um, if you you know, if you need a little bit more, then negotiate. Say, hey, you know, is it okay if I take an hour or I need a couple hours? Talk about it, but otherwise 20 minutes is it. But you come back and you initiate the conversation. Hopefully this is uh, this is helpful to you. Or you can, you, you can use words like I need a break or it's hard for me to listen right now. You know, that means anything else that's being said, can't hear it. That's when you, um, you take that time out. Okay. Now, the final one is contempt. And this one- It's the most dangerous. It's the most dangerous. If that is there, um, your marriage is in ICU, but your yeah, antidotes, it's not, it's not the end of the world. However, if you don't do anything about any of these, uh, it's going to spell the end of your relationship. Or some people will stay married for you know, 50, 60 years, but they are living in, in turmoil. They're living in, um, in really unhealthy and you know, unhappy relationships. So contempt is when you're taking a position of superiority over your partner and over, over your spouse. You know, you are the one who you are the one who never loses it. You are the one who always makes the right decision. Or, you know, you're looking down on, on your on, on your partner. So um, the reason why you see contempt in modern um, because you saw that in childhood, maybe your father or your mother was domineering and, you know, was condescending, talking down to other people and, you know, um, maybe even teasing, but really in doing that, you're cutting people down with your words. So maybe you've seen this modeled in childhood, but it's not healthy. Uh, so you, maybe you believe that you're more superior, you know, maybe you're the husband, so you feel like I'm more superior to you, so I can treat you however I want to treat you, talk to you however I want to talk to you, or maybe you make more money, and so now I'm going to talk to my husband or my wife as less than. Um, again, that sometimes it comes from a place, maybe there's been hurt, the things that we talked about in some of those questions, maybe there has been hurt. Yeah. Maybe you, you know, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people, and that's exactly what's happening. Hurt people, hurt people. So if you're hurt, if you have some things that are have not been resolved, the heart issues, mm -hmm. a broken spirit, the Bible says, who can bear? If you are hurt on the inside, you're not free. Some things have happened, deep things have happened. You become more dangerous in relationship and mm -hmm. in communication because misery wants to see other people miserable. Right. Yeah, so some of the signs are scoffing, you know, eye rolling when you're talking, you're rolling your eyes, sarcasm, sarcasm. Mm -hmm. It's really it used to be taught in, in school that sarcasm is the lowest form of communication. You know, when you say something as though, okay, like, oh, you think you're always right, you know, oh, ex excuse me, you're the one who makes more money, so I just need to be quiet. All that is sarcasm, and that's an indicator that's contempt in, um, your relationship and sometimes people we talked about this yesterday you can act like you're teasing or you you know you're joking but you're being sarcastic and your sarcasm is really going to hurt your spouse and it's passive aggressive people who use sarcasm we didn't talk about those communication styles but passive aggressive people they don't want to say exactly what they want to say so they'll come around the, the bush and yeah, you know, they're not direct they're not direct they're gonna come and hit you from the back end right with something yeah or right. Yeah. insults i think this is where mm -hmm. verbal abuse mm -hmm. is taking place in right. that arena of contempt like you're stupid you are this you're calling each other names and you know anything other than why jesus christ calls you yes uh, or, or your government name uh so these are insults and we'll start talking about you. well your family you're like this because your family this you're just like your mama you're just yeah. like your, you know all this the name calling name is calling. here if that's present you are in in a situation where you, this that behavior has to stop today. You can and don't say, well, once she stops or once he stops and we stop, you stop your part. Um, but that behavior has to stop. As children of the, of the most high God, this is not this is not healthy at all when we call each other names other than what um Christ calls us. And then so the antidote is again exploring and sharing your feelings, learning it, learning how to do conflict well, learning how to to disagree. So that's when you're taking time when somebody brings up a situation like, hey, I feel this, you know, I think we need to do this. And, you know, you disagree, like, okay, I hear what you're saying, you know, repeat to them what they're saying now, and then you can bring your, um, then you can bring your, your suggestion or your, or your solution to this, but uh, you've got to learn to do this. Um, and then, so some of the key words is, I'm feeling angry right now. So that means I need to take a time. I'm feeling angry right now. 
I'm having a hard time listening to this. Again, that means I, I need to I need to take a time out. And you take responsibility for yourself. You're not saying, well, you're doing this. And so that's why I'm acting. You're taking responsibility for yourself. I'm doing this. I'm feeling I'm having a hard time listening to this. I might just need, I might, or maybe, maybe can you say it a different way so I can make sure I understand? Because you might be hearing again, your heart is sick. So you're hearing things from a filter that, um, that's that uh, filtering the good and all you hear, all you're getting is the bad. So those are some of the things. So hopefully this was helpful. So put in the chat, let us know was this helpful. Um, and then we're gonna do a little practice. All right. So I wanna maybe give you a little picture because we like to share from our lives. Uh, we, when we talk about in our book, Stop the Foolishness, we're very open, mm -hmm. transparent, and you, 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 we don't try to, we don't want to try to prop ourselves up like uh, mm -hmm. we're some perfect couple. We always respond to situations the right way. We always, we're always thoughtful. No, we're working on it. Mm -hmm. We're working on it. I believe we're better than, much better than we used to be, mm -hmm. but we continue to work. Uh, I think uh, it's your father that says marriage makes you holy. Mm -hmm. Marriage is there to make you holy. Yes. And so we have to we have to work. So this is something, uh, just pulling something that was recent. Mm -hmm. uh, last week, it's it's as recent as last week, uh, when we were in Zimbabwe, uh, and we were participating in, in some of the pastors' conference. Uh, they had the female pastors and the male pastors. Mm -hmm. um, so. They had it in different locations. And then I believe on the last day, that's when both the men and the women, they all came together. And they had a special ceremony for a uh, senior bishop. Mm -hmm. uh, who, but while we were there, there was an incident, a negative incident that happened between us. Yeah. All right. So situation uh, was... When we're together and we're in Zimbabwe, I'm not in my element. When I'm in Chicago, I'm in my element. I know where I can go. I know where I'm, you know, I, I have the free, I'm, I'm free to move. I go where I, where I go, where when I'm in Zimbabwe and I'm in the conference, I'm having to kind of be aware of protocol and I am following my wife's lead. So um, there, there's a level of vulnerability that I have whenever I'm outside of my country and I'm in a different environment. I have to be a little bit more aware of how things are going to be interpreted, my movements and things like that. I follow her lead. Challenges, sometimes uh, she's not communicating in a way that I am understand it, understanding and I can feel that she is kind of leaving me to fend for myself. And when that happens, uh, there is a negative reaction. So we're going to role play. All right. So this is the situation. We have left the service and I'm following her and she is following her Mother, I don't realize what she's doing. I'm just kind of following her lead out and we're walking out of the service. And then when I am following her, she goes into a door with me right behind her. And as I interpret it, as I see things, she pretty much shuts the door in my face with all these ushers and hospitalities lined up. And I'm kind of embarrassed now and I just have to go walk away and go fend for myself and find another spot to be whatever. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're going to have a communication and we're going to role play. And I'm going to apply some of these things of how uh, the communication would go. And I want you to look critically at our dialogue and discern what's happening in our communication, in our conflict, okay? 
-hmm. And just so you know, we haven't practiced this, so this is this is like real life. We're doing it wrong. <laughs> We're going live. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Husband disrespected. Scene one, act one. Here we go. Okay. Fiona, I don't know what that was about, but I, whenever I, I, I come here, it's like all of a sudden you change and I don't recognize who you are and you just go off. I'm not in my country. I'm not in home. I'm not in Wheaton Christian Center. I'm not in Chicago and I'm following you and you slam the door in my face. I mean, that that is that is so, so disrespectful. And I don't come here to feel disrespected like that by you. That's very disrespectful. Okay. What do you mean? Wait a second. <laughs> I can, so my difference is going to go up. Yes. Okay. Anyway, we're, 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 we're going through. I don't want you to do, we're, this is not how we came across. Okay. This is a lesson. Are we, are we together? We are together. All right. We're, we, I don't know where we were before. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Two. Scene two. two. <laughs> Cut. Next. Uh, so That's why I have to kick you out of all the plays. Cause you know. Okay. All right. Are we are we frozen? Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Um. You know what? It's not my fault. I didn't even see you were behind me. So I can I cannot be held responsible. There's so, there's a lot going on. I I didn't I didn't see no, you. No, no. The problem is you're not you're not paying attention. You go and you just totally forget that you're white, you know, and then you you just run after after your mother, whoever. You just running after them, and that's what, and then I'm left by myself, I, and I'm looking stupid. I'm looking stupid. You you have me looking stupid. I think you're just being very demanding. No, 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 no. You're uh, what, 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 you're being disrespectful. It's no. You're very, very disrespectful. So I don't know all this all this preaching and stuff like you're talking. You're, it's very disrespectful and it's embarrassing for me. Oh yeah, I, I can do that. If that's how that's what we, we can do that. I, 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 I'm good. I was in this country two years. Uh, I, I know what I, this is how we're gonna, I can do this very well. Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, we, that, that's cool. Fine, fine, fine. No, no problem. No problem. I'm good. I just know, I just need to know what page we're on, how we're doing this. We're, 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 at, we're two independent individuals, and that's good. I, I just need to know how I'm operating. Okay. All right. So, um, let's talk about what that was. Looking at the four horsemen, what what do we see going on? Mm -hmm. So you guys can put it in the chat. I think you guys see. Yeah. What did you notice in this? So we just, we just put it in the chat because we, we're learning here together. Yes. Okay, so we said we saw stonewalling. And my body language is shut down as, you know. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. He's ignoring feelings, yeah. Talking at the same time, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same Shouting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not listening to each other. That's good. Yeah. Anger. Contempt. Right. I'm just down to feel that point. Like whatever. Oh, right. Here's something I don't care. You know, that's that's an indicator of, of contempt there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that's... I said needy. <laughs> well, there's a need there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so this is this is good, and I know sometimes you know uh, some of you might be um might might be really um connected to what we what we did there because it's happening. And so um, should we talk about, you know, the way that we did it was, um, we, we kind of came to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is, we're going to, we're going to replay and we're going to deal with the same situation. Okay. Because it was a problem, same situation. And this is how this is probably closer to how it it actually went down. Okay. All right. Okay, so you know, I don't I don't get what, what that was about because we we walked out together and I felt that you saw me and it's like you just closed the door in my face. 
while everyone was around, I I, I don't know what you wanted me to do, but I, I really, I, I felt hurt by, you know, what happened there. What was that? I'm really, really sorry. Mom, I want to do cut. Okay. I want to, so I want to do cut. Because there's there's a part that we you should include. We didn't we didn't necessarily include it because now we know how to communicate a little bit better. We we knew, you know we've been at this for a little bit longer. So I'm going to add something that we, we did not do necessarily because okay. we already understood each other. We were in the same way we've gone in our communication. But as you're starting this journey, this is what you want to do. So you shared what you shared. Yes. What happened? So what I hear you saying, I'm repeating. What I hear you saying is when I walked and I closed and I walked into the room and I closed the door for you, you felt hurt, you felt um, embarrassed. And, is is yeah. that correct? Yeah, that's. Okay. I mean, I yeah, I, I was very, I was taken back. Okay. That's, yeah, that's, that's how I felt. Well, you seem to be taken back, and yeah, you were. Uh, okay. Just if there was something going on, say hey. Um, any anything, any type of communication, say, uh, give me, uh, they're, they're changing or um, I, anything. I just didn't, I didn't know. Here yeah, I am just following you with the procession and then <laughs> well, it was, I, so I just, I just went to. Uh, I hear, I hear, I hear. And I'm really sorry for walking, walking into the door and, and quickly shutting up. When I walked in, I saw what was happening. Okay. And you know, my mom was changing herself again um, into her robe and stuff like that. And I was just in a positive moment. And so, but I'm really sorry. Um, the moment I saw that, I should have really walked out and and um, and let you know. And, uh, okay. So yeah. I'm really sorry. It's, it, it's good. Um... Yeah, I, I was feeling some way at the moment, but uh, yeah, I appreciate it. So what I'm going to do differently next time is ensure that we are on the same page, connected. So if, if there's any sudden movements or sudden changes in what we're, what we're doing, then I need to prioritize that and make sure that I'm communicating those things to you. That's what I need to do, uh, do differently. Yeah. Uh, you, you know how I am. I mean, if I don't feel... Like, I, I try to keep you, treat you as my priority. And I I do have that expectation. I always feel that in any situation, we are considering each other Absolutely. first. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, so I appreciate that. I'll, I'll do better by you feeling that. Yeah. Thank you for bringing it up. It's and, all good. And not, it's <laughs> all good. Ooh. And not holding it in. All right. You know, so. All right. Okay. Same situation, but we're applying some principles of communication. I start out by saying, I feel. Mm -hmm. This is how I feel. And it's it's perfectly okay for you in a situation to say, this is how, when I when this happens, this is how I feel. This is how it makes me feel. And I I know that my wife does not wake up in the morning to hurt me. Right. Is that an assumption? That I could, yeah. Yes. She doesn't get up in the morning to hurt me. So there is a, there is an assumption of good. I I believe in her intentions. So I don't want to attack her. We're, we're, we're dealing with not her personality, her character. We're dealing with, um, I'm expressing how I feel instead of you are, you always, you, you're disrespect, all this. I'm saying I feel this way it's it's me um yes yeah. so it's it's it, it leaves a different tone in the communication and it leaves openness for a healthy dialogue yes and, um, and what you did is you repeated right this is is this what i hear you saying that's a, that's a, that's a very very important step that you do not want to miss out on so when your spouse expresses something what you have to say is what I hear you saying is this. You summarize what they said. Is that correct? Before you respond, 
you summarize first and then to make sure that uh, you've heard correctly. Because again, remember our ears can have filters and we can miss, um, we can, there can be a lot of noise and miss important information. So what I hear you saying is this. Is that right? Is that correct? Yeah. If it's correct, then you can respond. And really just by doing that, you are slowing down the conversation. So it's not gonna be like, you know, uh, back and forth, back and forth so fast. You're slowing it down. What I hear you saying now, when I share my thing, you know, you could have said what I hear you saying is this, um, but there's, there's, that, yeah. there's that constant, like what I hear you saying, that's kind of repeating, reflecting back, summarizing, that way you make sure that your communication is clear and things are not missed out. All right, so summarize first before you respond. Summarize first, always summarize first before you respond. When you do this, I'm telling you, you're going to become masters of communication. So yes. because most of the issues that couples come up with, and again, we try to build this kind of marriage, most of the issues have to do with communication. But if you can master these, master what's happening in your body, master summarizing, uh, master, again, eliminating some of these four horsemen, the you always, things like that, your communication is going to be so much better and so much sweeter. So we, we've really become masters at communication because we work on it. We work on it yes. over and over until we get it. So you're going to leave this conference. You're going to go and you're going to make a mistake. That's okay. Get back on. You're going to fall. Get back on. It's like, okay, we're going to put into practice uh, those things that we have learned. I want so, to share with you some things that about in, in helping resolve conflict out of... Uh, if you can think of the word fight, this is um, this is from this is the book to husbands, uh, and if you could take the acronym, the fight. Um, number one, when you're dealing with a conflict, fight. F I G H T. F I G H T S. These are the acronym is FIGHTS, F-I-G-H-T. Number one, face each other. Mm -hmm. All right, it, it's, it's yeah, we, we, we look at each other, we face each other in communication. F stands for face each other. I, ignore distractions. All right, so when, sometimes when we're dealing with a conflict, we bring up all these other side issues that don't have to do with the matter that we're discussing. Mm -hmm. So she could have, in the conversation, uh, talked about, well, when we were in Chicago, you did this or mm -hmm. something unrelated. And that just exacerbates the issue and it's not resolved in the concept. So ignore the distractions. Um, that's I. G, guard your tongue. Mm. Avoid ridiculing and name calling. Once name calling enters the fight, I'm speaking to husbands, your wife won't hear anything else you say, no matter how right you might be. She becomes too busy thinking of how to defend herself. So guard your tongue. All right, F-I-G-H, hold the history. Mm. Hold the history. Words like you always, uh, why can't you ever, you never. We're bringing in history and it's clouding the communication. Hold the history. F-I-G-H-T, touch. In a communication when we're dealing with conflict, that touch uh, softens the heart and communicates vulnerability. We're, we got an issue, but we're still in this together. We got a challenge in our relationship, challenge in our marriage, but just that touch says, uh, while we're facing each other, says we're going to work it out. Yeah, we're not enemies. Yes, we're not enemies. Stay in there. That's the S. Uh, finish the fight. Don't go to bed with unresolved anger. Take a time out if emotions are too high, but commit to coming back to finish the fight. All right? So those are some principles in um, dealing with conflict. Yeah. Um, so I know we have a lot of questions to answer. And so, yes. but uh, before, we, before we get to the questions, 
um, there's a couple of things we want to do. Um, we're going to share a link with some resources. So I'm, I'm going to send these to our, our directors. A link with some resources. Um, these are going to really be helpful to you in knowing how to do um, conflict well. Sometimes we have an argument and we have a hangover and it's, it's hard for us to kind of come back to each other after we've had an argument. We're going to give you some resources. So that's that's going to be on the list of resources. So when I send you a link, you can go and download these. These are free. You can go and download them. Uh, we're going to send you a link on rebuilding trust. When trust has been broken, uh, how do you rebuild trust? And so we have the acronym trust there. You can go and uh, look at that. I'm going to share things like uh, weekly meeting um, agenda for you know for your marriage, uh, monthly meetings with the with the family, and one this came up yesterday discussing your financial philosophy. Um, that's going to be on the link as well, kind of giving you steps on how to discuss your financial philosophy. And another one that's going to be really important is your values. Maybe start off with that one. The values. What are your values? Because uh, sometimes yeah, we they have, need to be defined. They need to be defined because sometimes we're having. Uh, challenges in our communication only because they are we have different values value complex value complex and it so it has to become one we have to have we have to have shared values and so being able to understand that so um the link is going to be going up just in a few minutes but while that's going up um so obviously annie i, I sent you the link there where they can go in and people can um go and download you can put it in the chat because uh, i'm not on the you know, different system here uh, but while we do that, I, I, we're about to meddle with you a little bit. We're going to uh, maybe upset some people. But we think this is important because we live in, again, a modern world where there are a lot of threats, a lot more threats um, in our, there are lots more, a lot more threats in our marriages. And one way that we eliminate threats and even sometimes a lack of communication or maybe where there's been trust that's been broken well, it doesn't have to be broken, but this is just this just helps couples know each other where they are because the enemy is going about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so one thing that we have found to be helpful, again, we don't want to cause any arguments in the homes, but we want to strongly encourage this. This is downloading the Life 360 app. Mm -hmm. The okay. Life, the Life, it's called, it's Life 360, Life and 360. Um, this one enables um, sharing of location, right? We use this for our children, of course, with, with each other. And of course, sometimes our children will call us like, hey. And it's typically the men, I mm -hmm. notice, mm -hmm. that don't like this. Mm -hmm. And I still have not found any man who has given me a good reason why he does not want this location. Doesn't want my I don't want my wife tracking me. Where are you going, married man? That you need to be, it needs to be unless you are you a secret agent? Are are you will they have M uh M6? Are you are you working for the British government and you have governmental secrets? What are you M6? <laughs> yeah, MI6. You, you must be MI6. What, what is it that you, uh, in your organization, you guys are dealing with some clandestine, clandestine uh, secret operations that no one can know? Your, your, your wife, as a protector, I want to know where she is so that if there's a situation I need to get to her fast, I can. And now that we have technology, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm doing something shady that I need to be I need to be secretive. And that's really taken for granted, of course, that your spouse should have all of your passwords. She knows your email address. She knows your uh, how to open up your cell phone. She, she can see your messages. If you have a Facebook or Instagram account, she can log in because uh, you have nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. you're, you're married. Mm -hmm. And this is simply protecting the yeah. marriage because the enemy again wants to destroy marriages. I don't I don't see the women fighting this one as much. And especially if you've ever had anything that you've had to repent of regarding another woman where you, your behavior has been shady. Or another man. Or another man, mm -hmm. what you have lost now is the benefit of the doubt. Stop saying, why don't you trust me? 
-hmm. that you don't get to say that. This happened a long time ago. Yeah, you don't get to say that ever. No. You don't need to talk about trust. And you, 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 she doesn't, you, you, you trust but verify. Mm -hmm. That's what we know in business. Trust but verify. And so your life is an open book. So I, I if there's reasons why, if you, you don't want to know where your wife is at all times and she doesn't know, I, I don't get it. I, I just don't understand. And this is what, this is why I haven't gone down with scandal because I have systems around me that protect what's most important. Because I know that a woman just needs to say something. Yeah, and it's it's not controlling. You know, it's simply it's 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 like I'm I'm honoring, I'm respecting you uh, enough to say, hey, this is where I am. Um, yeah. you I know. don't just walk out the house and you not no, know. Him. No. Yeah, so it's, it's not saying, well, you, you know, she's going to be controlling you or he's going to be controlling you. No, this is how civilized people live. This is first class. First class. This is first class. First class. First class. Not, like, not. Hey, this is where I am. You know, you can share. Um, you it, share it, information. You share information. We're not hiding things uh, from each other. You know, bank accounts, unless if somebody has a gambling issue, is one that just spends without any control, then, you know, then we need to put some, some guardrails there. But otherwise... We want to keep things open because the enemy operates in secret. Mm. The enemy operates. He loves to have secrets between. We're saving marriages right now. He loves to have. Yeah. This is where the enemy is coming. Yeah. This is where the issue is. This is where people yeah. are getting divorced right here. Yeah. This, because it's in the secret things. Secret, yeah. There's a lot of secrets. And it's, it's it's building up animosity and resentment in the marriage. It's destroying the secrets. Are destroying the marriage. Mm -hmm. And there's when there's secrets, there's no trust. Right. We don't trust each other. Right. And we can't be fully, you know, we can't be naked and ashamed with, with each other. And so, and that's what the enemy wants. He wants to always have a have a foothold um, in your marriage. And so, download this, that. This is not going to get amens. We don't get a lot of amens, so, a lot of shouts, a lot of clap on this. Right where you are, if you're not using your phone, even if you are, I want you to. But there's way it. too much. I'm yeah. a pastor and there's way too much mess going on right. with believers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why and are we going to serve God or not? Are we going to have God honoring relationships, marriages, or not? Yeah, we we get to, and this is one way that you can start to now open up and encourage, you know, the transparency yeah. in uh in relationship. And go, even going back, when there's been infidelity, there are two things that have to happen. You know, two things that are important in rebuilding the trust is that radical honesty and radical transparency. So, like what you say, what if there's been something that's happened already? Even it's been like, maybe you couldn't really prove it and things like that. The fact that it even came up means it has mm. to be radical honesty, radical transparency. You you can't say, I'm tired of talking about this anymore. When are you going to get over this? You don't have that right. You don't have, you've don't. you lost that right. Uh, you've lost the right. So, you know, um, get on. Get, um, but get radical on. transparency, that squashes it. Mm -hmm. It brings, uh, you, you sow seeds of trust. When you are radically transparent, there's no, I mean, there's no more room for defensiveness. No, no, no. So I'm gonna pull up the questions now. Um, mm. and so I'm, I'm not sure if they like this gospel. <laughs> that we encourage it. We do it. That's your homework. Download the three out last three sixty app and get to it. So we're gonna start off maybe with the fun questions. Go go to the sex questions. We have a lot of questions. We may not be able to go through all of them, but uh, we're gonna go over a little bit over time today. So we've been given. Uh, the permission to do that, so we're gonna go ahead uh, to do that. So we're gonna. Uh, how about we start with the sex question? The little fun. I question. love a, I love a good sex question. Uh, all right. The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> so all he wants is sex. He never wants to be romantic or talk about progress in life or future plans. It's like he's confused. I'm fed up. It's been ten years. We've been doing this for ten years. Mm -hmm. All right. All he wants is sex. He does. Mm -hmm. He also wants respect too. It's not all he wants. He wants respect as well. Mm -hmm. So, so he's saying he's I, think, I think I think respect was that he wants sex. He also wants to be respected. Mm -hmm. uh, but all right. So let me speak to the husband. Uh, a woman. A man has to have sex to feel loved and appreciated. He needs sex that makes him feel loved and appreciated. 
a woman needs to feel loved and appreciated to have sex. Mm -hmm. And so as a husband, your number one job, you got one job, one job. Husbands love your wives. That's your one job. And husband, it doesn't sound like your wife is feeling loved. So now you have your love languages. You know how she interprets and how she receives love. You need to become a master. If it's if it's Mandarin and that's the language she speaks in love, you need to become a master of Mandarin and communicating her love language in a way that she is overwhelmed. She is messed up. And when you do that, this, this is now a non-issue. Uh, mm -hmm. She is going to give it up. She'll do somersaults, whatever you need. Uh, she can't help. Why? Because she's wired by God. It's in her DNA. It's the way she is constructed. Fearfully and wonderfully made, she's designed by God to respond to your love. Yeah. She can't help it. Her name is woman. Mm -hmm. And she needs the security. We talked about her having a vision and a plan for your uh, for your for your family, husband. So your wife is asking, like, hey, you know, bring me this. Let's have this discussion about yeah. where we're going as a family. Uh, and so that's going to be that's one of the resources. If you saw the link, that's one of the resources that, that we have there is to have a family meeting, you know, a marriage meeting, Absolutely. a weekly marriage meeting where you discuss your, your goals, your plans, and things like that. Your wife needs to so husband, all men here, please take the lead in calling the meeting to say, okay, this is when this this meet on this particular day to discuss our plans. And we gave, we gave you an agenda right there. You can follow, uh, it's easy one to follow, but that's uh, women are simply looking for that. It, men are not complicated, but women are not complicated. You lead us and we will follow. And so um lead the family by not just saying, I'm the man, I need sex, I'm going to get sex, you know. Yes, that's good, she's going to give it to you. But she's saying, please help me, you know, be able to be fully present by your leading me. I need you, I need to, I want, I want to submit, but I need you to lead me and not just come to me when, uh, when it's sex. So when you talk about husband's love, I'm just going to read, read these verses for you. Mm -hmm. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, hopeful and endures through every circumstances. So husbands love your wives. Uh, put this stuff into practice uh, and she is going to respond. Yeah. She is going to respond to your love. Uh, and because you, because I love my wife, I'm going to make sure she's taken care of. So yeah. her security is communicating my love to her. Mm -hmm. Love is going to protect. Love is going to protect. Love is going to care for and protect. So uh, if your wife is not secure about the future, she can't respond properly she responds to love okay. um another sex question my wife doesn't touch me or initiate intimacy i have to beg for sex and if we have it it's always the same position which has now put me off to having that all okay all right um husband don't be put off you, you still need to get it all right, I'm looking out for you, husband. <laughs> I, I don't want you. I don't want you to be celebrate as a, celebrate as a, as a married man. Mm -hmm. um, I I encourage you. Um, uh, oh, you know. By the way, whenever your wife initiates. That is a rarity. That is not the norm. She's not wired to initiate. She's wired to respond. You are the initiator in general. So I just want you to have your expectations right. Whenever she initiates, that's a plus. Um, every single night I go to bed, 
I wish she would initiate. She doesn't, rarely. I mean, sometimes, not a whole lot. If I'm waiting, if I'm sitting here waiting for her to initiate, I'm gonna be frustrated. So you have to initiate nine times out of 10. She's not her, remember, she's a responder. Now, one way to get her to initiate is you mess her up all during the day with love. She's gonna have to, she's gonna have to respond. She's gotta respond. So if you want her to initiate, you start off uh, in the morning uh, overwhelming her, communicating her love language, getting her flowers, giving it, sending her a nice text message. You are constantly communicating love. In, in chapter five of Stop the Foolishness for Husbands, I kind of I talk about this. Uh, in chapter five. I love chapter five. That's my favorite chapter. I'll talk to the wife when you get done. Okay. Yeah. I want this. I want my brother, man, to enjoy the goodness of life. Yeah. I want him to enjoy the sweet nectar. Uh, there's a verse in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15. The struggles of fools weary them, for they don't know how to go to the city. It's uh, it's a husband that doesn't know how to enter the city that is frustrated. There are all kinds of wonderful, beautiful sights in the city. But if you don't have the skill set, you will be frustrated about your sex life because you don't know how to uh, enter into that beautiful city uh, where you're able to enjoy your wife. So I encourage you, uh, you initiate and when she, when her love tank is overflowing, she is going to initiate. So don't look to her and expect something uh, that you have not poured in. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Um, maybe I can even just add, he, talk, he talks about his frustrated about positions. Uh, you be the one that, yeah. that leads, you know, like, hey, let, let's, let's try this. Um, so you can be the one, who, she may not, you know, come up with these ideas. However, wife, if you're listening, if you're wife life, we share positions and there's a lot of positions you can Yeah, and encourage you to go on wife life. Yeah, there's a lot of positions there that you that you can try. But now wife, why did your husband have to beg for sex? I mean, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know all the, the the whole situation, but the moment your husband is having to beg for sex, it's like it's like he becomes like a little like a little child who's having to beg for something that that's his. And scripture really tells him that you know, and you the same Bible you're reading, he's reading that your body belongs to him. So we don't have the space where he's having to to beg. Where, where, where do you want him to get it? What 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 should he do? He married. You married. Really, you married. For that's the only store he can shop. That's at. the only store he can it's shop. It's a one stop so, shop. One stop. And he's 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 going to the to the, to the shop. Yeah. And he's looking at the window and it's closed. <laughs> it's closed. Right. That's the one shop that he has no place else to go. Uh, I, need, I need you to repent today and do mm. not allow your husband to have to. He needs it physiologically. Husband. He, he absolutely has to have it. And as far as the positions are concerned, when when you are loving your wife, you 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 are the man. You are the initiator. You will put her in all kinds of positions she never thought imaginable. Mm -hmm. I, th there, there are positions that are on my mind. I haven't, I haven't done it yet. It's a part of my plan. Uh, but you got, you got one life to enjoy one sex. Life. Yeah, and so yeah. that's right. Take, take initiative. Absolutely. And sometimes people might think, oh, this is unholy if we don't do the if we if we if we do anything else other than the missionary style. You know, like then everything else becomes unholy. No, there's a lot of things that you can explore, have fun with it. So if she's not a wife life, we're sharing those posts. Um, we'll start again in the month of October, but we're sharing those posts. You can go back and look through the old ones. But um, again, wife, please don't make your husband beg for sex because you, you can go somewhere else and he doesn't have to beg when somebody's waiting. You know, it's just like, it's, it's over here. Not that he will ever do not that. Not that he'll ever do it, but no, don't push him to have to do you know, No, he's not place. doing that. No matter what, you'll die holy before you go there. Amen. All right, let's go to um, another one. My husband likes hugging ladies at church and it does bother me. How can I approach him to stop? Is it proper for opposite sex to hug at church? What kind of hug? 
That's it's, because everyone, uh, and, and cultures are different. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, she's bothered by it. So the fact that she's bothered by it means that he now needs to refrain uh, right. from doing that. And it might be a history or something, or maybe. Maybe it's not him. It could be the other lady who's melting his arms. We don't know. So, yeah, that, I mean, so yeah. I, I, I've been in church. Are we, are we just talking about as we greet, like a side hug, like, like, no, 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 this, not this, one. this one that the people, people yeah. do the, yeah. that it, yeah. every culture is different, though. Yeah. I know in it's, it's, it, it could be a problem. So, if it's a problem yeah. to your wife. Yeah, uh, just, some people are hiking, kind of holding on for losing yeah, so then, then, yeah, that, then that, that's you know, a problem. And squeezing, uh, that that's that's the problem. So uh, yeah. if you, if you have something to share, by all means, uh, you can yeah. you, you can unmute it. Um, oh, my my husband doesn't brush his teeth. <laughs> he does not kiss me at all. Okay, and even taking a shower is a miracle. Intimacy is affected. All we do is sex, not make love. Okay, so it oh. sounds like I, I just want to make sure that the wife is not being passive aggressive now, because sometimes a person is not aware that uh, there's something about them that's out of place. So when you tell me uh, you get a mint, your breath is not something like that. I'm grateful. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. So if your husband is walking around with his breath not fresh, he's not brushing his teeth. He's not brushing his teeth. He's teeth. not, then the problem. Okay. It's really one on one. That is, I mean, your wife can do so much, but do you got to brush your teeth twice a day? Uh, I don't know where, no, no matter, maybe that's brushing teeth was not a big thing, but now you are a grown man, you are a married man. Uh, it's just being self aware. Mm -hmm. All right. We shouldn't have to, you're not in second grade. Uh, <laughs> You have to brush your teeth. Yeah, so much you want to be kissing, give him a mint and then kiss him. Um, but yeah, when 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 proper grooming is not there for men or women, it does impact the sex life. And so, you know. And if you don't brush your teeth, brother, um, wife, I give you permission to remind him every day to brush his teeth. Uh, and if you're not one that habitually brushes your teeth at least twice a day. Don't complain about reminders. Don't get offended because you've taught her how to treat you. <laughs> you've taught your wife how to treat you. have taught your wife that brushing your teeth is not a big deal for you. You can take it or leave it. And it's a big deal. And so you're not aware, evidently, that it's a big deal. Yeah. And so God has given you help. Praise God. She's a help made suitable. She's going to help you to remember to brush your teeth every day. Mm -hmm. All right. And don't be offended because... If you've ever gone a day without brushing your teeth, then evidently uh, you just need training because that's not normal. Yeah. That's not normal. Yeah. I can't I can't wake up and be awake for five minutes. I, I can't make a trip to the bathroom without brushing my teeth. This could be a topic maybe for Moy when you have a Moy meetings. You know, don't talk about it here. We will talk about it now. You gonna brush your, <laughs> your breath stink and you gonna brush your teeth. <laughs> we can talk about. Uh, I'm just trying to be helpful. Okay, next question. Right, right now, after talking about it, I want to make sure my breath is fresh. Let me, let me pull out my mint strip. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All right. <laughs> we, do, we do like our breath fresh when we kiss and so on. Someone said mint won't work. <laughs> no, it won't work. You, you got to brush and go. You know, that's another thing. Go to the dentist, make dental appointments for you and the family. Yeah, because it might be an infection somewhere. Yeah. And maybe his gums are hurting and so he doesn't want to brush his teeth because there's a lot of pain. We don't know. We don't know what's happening. So do your part. All right. Um, that was fun. Yes. I fell out of love with my husband years ago. Sex is the same style. No adventures. Romance was never there. I regret my marriage. I have decided to leave. I'm glad you tuned in. You came to the right place. Absolutely. Uh, you came to the right place, and God hates divorce. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what I want to encourage you, wife, to do is to stay in the room and 
while you are, I'm not sure if you're on Wi Fi. I encourage you to get on Wi Fi uh, because the Bible says that you are very powerful as a woman of God, as a virtuous woman of God. You are very powerful. And through your gentle and quiet spirit, you're able, you're able to win your husband. So I encourage you uh, to stay in there and to really, uh, one, how is your relationship with God? Oh, how is your relationship? Uh, are, are you spending time in his presence? How is your heart? Have you forgiven everyone? Is your heart clean? Is it well with your soul, your mind, your will, your emotion? Are you at peace there? Because that's not a husband issue. That's a you issue. Are you healthy? Mm -hmm. Because your husband is not determining your spiritual health. So it sounds like uh, there, there, there might be an opportunity for deliverance and healing in your own heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes we start to focus on all that is wrong in your husband. He says that well, he's not romantic. There's no adventure. Sex is the same same position and style, things like that. That means now your focus has become totally on all uh, the negative things instead of the good things. So there are some good things that, that are happening there. You need to start uh, focusing on those yes. adventures. You might be the one to create adventures. You might be the most spontaneous one. That's okay. You create those and just say, well, if he doesn't do it, it's not going to happen. You can create those. The different positions we can say, hey, hey, honey, I'd love to try this. So, husband, if yeah. you hear husbands, your wives are going to, you know, I don't know what they're talking about in wife life, but I'll, I'll, we, your wives are going to want to try our different positions and go along with it. Yeah. You know, sometimes we try a different position and we just end up laughing because, like, well, I don't know how these people yeah. do this. This, this is not working. No. And then, then we go back and do what we do. Yeah, we go do what works. Well, yeah. What works would be. So that's a that's a that's a joy. That's, you're, you're trying things. Yes. You, you can. So husband, if your wife says, hey, can we try this position? Your answer is going to be, yes. This, this, let, this. Let, let's try. Let's try. Let's go for it. Uh, this one says, rates of divorce are rising in our church. Too much focus on women's events and fundraising. Men meet and focus too much on sex and not leading their family well. So okay. when, when the men are meeting, we're talking about how to have more sex, but not necessarily how to, how to lead the family. Okay. So I just want to encourage you. Because the blessing that we receive uh, from the church comes from the teachable spirit. Sometimes uh, when we talk about the things that we see wrong, the very things that you see wrong, God wants you to engage because the leadership says we're engaging in this and God wants to bless you when you get involved with a pure heart. Uh, instead of you want to make sure that you don't have a critical spirit because God does God never ever blesses a critical spirit. It's a teachable spirit. Blessed mm -hmm. are the meek for they're going to inherit. So even if let's say for example, even if there are too many um, fundraising programs, let's say that's that's the leadership. They have too many fund. I'm being hypothetical. Let's say the leadership has too many fundraising programs. If I'm in the church and I am doing it with a pure heart, God is going to have, God is going to hold the leader responsible for too many programs. But you, with your pure heart that are worshiping God, are going to receive the blessing. While if your leaders are going to do something wrong, they're going to be rebuked. But because your heart is worshiping God and you're honoring his word and obeying those who have the lead, spiritual leadership over you, what you're interested in, you're interested in God's blessing, God's favor upon you and upon your family. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you, uh, stay in your area, stay in your lane. Now, as far as, what was the other part? Uh, I want, it's important that you are healthy. And sometimes- Men what, need to be asking for men to lead. Yes. You know, just discuss sex at the, at the meetings. Okay. Um, um, sometimes this is where- perception because sometimes we can have a perception that this is all that we're discussing. I was just there and we were discussing all kinds of things. We weren't just discussing sex, 
But if you have this perception, remember we talk about communication? Communication, some of the noise, it can be our own perception. And we can make that judgment and then emotionally we are reacting in a negative way. So I know if it has anything to do with the men's meeting that I was a part of, and I was I was there for two sessions, we talked about health, we talked about uh, uh, you know what I shared. I, when I was sharing, I was sharing about husbands laying down their lives to serve their wives. I was talking about servant leadership. Uh, so that's not all we talk about, but I want to hear you. I want you to know that you, 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 you're, you're being heard. And the reason why I'm coming at you a different way, uh, because I'm interested in you winning. I'm interested in your marriage winning. And there are some things that are going to bring victory and healing and life. But uh, there, there's some things you have to just tune out. If you don't understand what's going on, tune out and focus on uh, what God is doing in your life and how he's, how, how you're responding to the Holy Spirit so that you're becoming a better wife. Let that be your focus. And then let God, as you are, because you have enough to do in honoring God's word and obeying God's word. That's enough work for a lifetime to uh, reverence your husband as, as unto the Lord. That's, that's enough. And you're so busy uh, understanding and getting the revelation of being a wife, you just don't have time to be critical of the church and of your husband. I, I hope my tone was right in saying that, but I, I'm interested. I'm, I'm here and I'm picking up some things that are not healthy mm -hmm. and that the enemy would use to plant a trap. A fence is a trap. That's what it actually means in the original language. It's a trap. And I'm seeing the trap of a fence to come and to destroy your marriage and also to destroy your relationship with God, ultimately. That's mm -hmm. what the enemy's after. Yeah, and so just, just another reminder. Men, if you're listening here, please lead your wives by calling a meeting, calling for a meeting. Um, download the resources that we gave you, the agenda and how to run the meeting uh, for your family. But please lead your wives are looking uh, seeking that. So I um and for the men, you know, I know you have the wife life for the women. Mm -hmm. For the men, uh, I have started a podcast. Uh, I don't want. I just really it, it's out there. It, it's something that I'm talking about. Some of these things I'm talking about what it means uh, to be the kind of husband that serves your wife and getting real practical with some things. And having fun with it. So you can go to, you can type in Paul Arthur's YouTube and you'll scroll down. Not the Wheaton Christian Center one, but there, there's a site where I just, we just launched. So there are two episodes there right now that are speaking to men that I encourage you as a husband to invest to better yourself. Okay. Ladies wash after sex, not just to wipe sperms. Ladies wash up uh, your ups, bums with water. Smell feces turn off smelling again. I'm just reading as it is. Smell feces turn off men having sex or giving a mess. So this man is complaining that the wife is not doing proper grooming, uh, not cleaning up after yourself, and you can smell uh, your feces when you've gone to the bathroom. So saying please wash up, um, wash your body. So ladies, yeah. Uh, I think mean, those those wipes, those wet wipes, are good. I mean, wet wipes are just water and you know on the cloth, whatever. But it's, it, it doesn't it doesn't take much just to go and wipe up because it's it's turning off. So some wives are complaining that my husband doesn't want to have sex with me. It could be because he's turned off by the smell uh, that you are that you that you have. So it's good if you can by all means. It's not always possible, but if you can, just take a shower in the evening. Just take a shower in the evening, morning and evening, morning and evening. Uh, there's there's nothing wrong with that. But because when you do that, first of all, you feel fresher and you're more ready to have sex. But it also then doesn't. Um, push your husband away so some of us are complaining your sex it could be because we are not mm -hmm. smelling very well okay uh we're gonna go to, go to the next question here um these are really good questions yes <laughs> yes 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 so this uh let's see let's go to find the questions um oh, how do you 
Mm. Okay, this might be need to be discussed at the local in the, in the physical one, but it says how do we deal with elders and saints uh friendships who show each other side chicks leading to potential breakup of families? So there's some elders okay. and saints you have say side that again. How do we how do we put deal and say how do we deal with elders and saints? Um, friendships. They're, they're friendships. Elders and friends. saints have friendships. Uh -huh. and they, show, they show each other side chicks leading to potential breakup of family. So elders are married elders are showing each other's they're, they're side chicks. They have a side chick. They're an elder and they have a side chick. They have a side chick. And so they're showing this guy, right. my friend, that he is my side. Oh, oh good, the friend showing the elder, the guy. You know, my side I want chick. you to send the name of that elder uh, to overseer Abisha. Send him, he wants that elder's name. Mm -hmm. All right, yes. privately send that elder's name. Absolutely. So I got to do it again. Um, I'm in a blended family and living like a single mother in, mar in a marriage. I'm not involved in most of the important decisions with kids, finances. So it means that this woman married into a family, inherited family, but she's not involved in, um, or I'm like a single mother in marriage. I'm not involved in the most important decisions. Um, so they're not working together as a, as a, as a couple with a blended family. I'm not sure if she's along with the kids. So. Okay, I'm in a blended family. Mm -hmm. I'm living like a single mother in the marriage. So she has kids. He has kids. Um, okay. So let's talk about a blended family for a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Different rules apply when you are in a blended family uh, because you're husband if you're if you're a wife and you're bringing in kids but he's not the father mm -hmm. uh, he has to win the hearts of those children and if they already have a father mm -hmm. um he has to sort of find his 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 his, his space there so i want your expectations as a mother that has been has gone through maybe a divorce or has children that are not your husband's uh, to understand that he cannot be he has to find his space he has to win the heart of the children but he can't be the primary disciplinarian because they 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 have a father so it's there are different rules that apply when you're dealing with a blended family. He can love them, but I want your expectations to be clear. It's when we have these situations that are outside of God's primary uh, will. His primary will is that you're married one time and that there's no divorce. When, when that happens, then God will work with you, but it's it's something's different. So there, there has to be that, that umbrella of grace mm -hmm. for your spouse. For you, the, you're the stepfather. Uh, it's important that you and your wife are able to communicate about the blended family and how you will uh, parent as a stepfather, how you will win the hearts of those children so that they can respond uh, favorably, even though you're not the biological father. Those are conversations that you have to have. We talked about communication. And maybe these are difficult communications, conversations that you have to have. But it's important that when you marry your wife, you love her and you love uh, what she loves. And when you marry her, uh, you embrace that role of being a part of a blended family. And God can uh, move even in a blended family and open the hearts of those children to you uh, so that you're able to pour into them and see them thrive in life. Yeah, and I think that another question that's coming through that's connected to this one is that, you know, it says his wife uh, won't accept his child. He only had a child from previous marriage and so she, his wife is not open to to bring the child into the home or open to, sounds like it. Um, I have a relationship. The child's not allowed to come into the home. Okay. And see, these are kind of these are some things 
that should have been discussed before you got married. Mm -hmm. When you married him, you knew he had children. Mm -hmm. And he still, as a father, has a responsibility before God to raise that child mm -hmm. in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And so if you love him, you want him to continue to be a husband to you. You want him to continue to provide for you. Uh, you, 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 you have to understand that he cannot properly fully be there for you and for your family mm -hmm. if a part of his God-given responsibility is being cut off. He's, he's not even feeling like a man if he's not properly caring for his own house. Mm -hmm. And so when you married him, you signed up for his children before they're grown. Now, once the children are grown, uh, they need to start to find their way. As, so I'm not talking about grown children, but children that are not yet grown, uh, you need to step in and uh, befriend. Uh, and as much as you can, maybe you're not, uh, you're not the mother, but you're like an aunt, a loving aunt to that child uh, that's not yours biologically. And sometimes the child will open up and receive, will receive you as their, their own mother. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing when that happens. Wife, you need to repent. You need to repent. You need to bring your husband in a difficult situation. And so for those who do uh, premarital counseling, um, if you come across a, a potential blended family, please make sure you're having these discussions. How are we going to parent these children? And uh, you know, are they going to be allowed to come in or not? All these things need to be discussed before. Don't you think it's just you and it's just the two of you? You have to make sure that the children are somehow involved in this because you're not just coming by yourself. Yeah. You're coming with your own uh, family. There. I saw something for uh, an older couple who spent their lives pouring with the children. Now the children have left mm -hmm. the home and they are with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, what? How do they uh, navigate the struggle mm -hmm. when their life has been about the children? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're trying to do foundational work. That's what it is. Uh, you have about you have a bad foundation, and it's it's now exposed uh, because you were never supposed to make your relationship about your children. You were supposed to prioritize each other, but if you prioritize your children and your relationship, your marriage was about raising your children instead of. Uh, your children knowing their place in the relationship. When the children are grown and gone, now you're stuck with this person that you have not properly invested. The good news is uh, you can start today mm -hmm. sowing seeds of love in your relationship. You can start today uh, determining, uh, I, I encourage you to establish some values now. Mm -hmm. Set some values. Mm -hmm. Set some priority. Tell us some of the work she said to do. Yes, but you do some work right now. Work you were supposed to do years ago. Do some work right now, so you can start talking about and dreaming what kind of relationship you're going to have in this season of your life. Where are you going to go on vacation? This is time for you to have fun, enjoy, um, spending time, do things together that you've never done. Create some memories. Mm -hmm. This is your time, and so plan, discuss, dream again. You haven't dreamt in a long time. Dream again. Uh, so. There's nothing wrong. Uh, there's certainly emptiness um, uh, divorces that are happening. So don't be that, don't, don't be in that in that uh, statistic. Um, you have a new marriage now. You can you can um, re reinvent whatever marriage you want to have. Uh, what about secrets with family? He has family plans, sibling plans, and secrets about even simple things like holidays. I feel like an outsider. It hurts sometimes. If her husband has plans, plans with his family, with his siblings, and not including his wife. Okay. So it, it sounds, husband, as if your wife is not feeling like a priority. So the primary plans that you have, the primary plans to vacation and get away are to be with your wife. Everything else is extra and they must 
not take away from the marriage. So plans with your family and things like that. First of all, uh, when you get married, you, the two become one. So my question is, why aren't spouses included in that? I, my, all my siblings are married and we do things together. Mm -hmm. My wife is included in everything we do. I don't go with my family like I'm a, like I'm a youth. I'm married now and she's coming with me. So I wanna challenge that husband where you're just away with your own family. And why I would encourage you uh, to uh, sow seeds into your husband's family, sow seeds of love. If there's a gift, uh, you be the one to give the gift. You be the one to remember your, your sister-in-law's birthdays and celebrate them. You are part of that family, so you want to make, you want to sow seeds, uh, especially as an in-law, sow seeds of love so that uh, they start to see you not just, uh, they start to see you as one of their sisters. That's important. And, and there's some things that you can do why, uh, to that end. Yeah, so uh, Samson saying he has a contribution. So by all means, uh, you can unmute and share your contribution. Um, let's see people here. Um, while he's doing that, I'm going to go to the next question. But yeah, by all means, please. Uh, yes, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Hello, Francis. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, we can. Now. Yes, we can. Yeah. Um, I, I am I am in United Kingdom. Uh, I'm a 41 year old yeah, a young middle aged man. <laughs> I'm used to saying young, but um, around me, pastors, I've been married for 17 years. I love my wife, and constantly we we follow the teachings of uh, of Dr. Yuna and Dr. Ezekiel. You know, just recently I was reminding my wife to go and revisit you know a, the wise woman. So we talk about you know sex positions and different stuff that you were mentioning. But there is something that is happening around me. You know, I come from a family of four. I've got three sisters. But there is something that, that is hurting me so much um, that is happening around me because I've got loads of friends. And each and every one of my friends, I tell them, you don't qualify to be my friend if I can't tell you when I'm struggling and if you can tell me when you're struggling. But there is a pattern that I'm seeing with most of the guys that I speak to. These are men that are there for their families, there for their wives. But it's like the enemy is ravaging our houses, whereby good men are being punished for being good. I don't know. It's like uh, it's a repetition that I'm seeing, whereby, you know, like there is an understanding that I'm seeing that is hitting my sisters, whereby, oh, he ain't going to go anywhere. He, he loves God too much. So I remember some, some, one guy who came to me said, my wife is, when she is on a 21-day fast, she doesn't want to be touched. And I said to him, bro, you need to get this checked because this is a recipe for disaster. And a short while after the, the husband, this is a man who was an example of how to love a woman, you know. Mm -hmm. And a short while from there, I had my, 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 my friend, you know, a loving man going in an affair with a younger woman. So there is like a, a misunderstanding whereby just because a man is a Christian, like Pastor said, Pastor Arthur said, to say, the men interpret having sex as, as being loved. And so the principles that we need, I believe we need to, to not shake is women need to be loved, men need to be respected. But how I interpret as respect is when my wife says yes to sex. Otherwise that rejection, when it keeps on building, I am seeing God loving men pastors, I speak this from a, from a hurting heart, falling from grace, punishing them from being good men, so that is just a, a contribution that I'm just saying, may God open our eyes. And I'm not, it's not just because I've got three sisters. My sisters, I counseled them by myself to say, forget culture. If I know what men need, I'm going to tell you. So number one need of a man, <laughs> like what pastor say, even if things are not in the home, let's have sex and then the men's head can clear. But my sisters, it's like the enemy is ravaging. Pastors in the United Kingdom, young people, marriages are being ravaged by the enemy. It's like women think, oh, just because he's a Christian, he doesn't go anywhere. And this is destroying marriages. So help us, pastors. Yes. 
Yeah, um, thank you. Sorry for, for, for it being long. Oh, so, no, that, that was good. I'm, I'm glad that, um, that, that that's an important truth that you shared. Now, with everything, uh, there are, I am responsible for my vessel, ultimately. There are situations where if, you, if you're dealing with the spirit of lust and for a man to commit adultery, that's a spirit of lust. When we get married, we say in sickness and in health. What happens if the wife is sick and she cannot perform wifely duties? Does a man have uh, a man of God? then have access to say, well, I got to get it somehow and go out and commit adultery. I think we have a good example in our father who, you know, lived uh, without a woman for, for either, I'm thinking either 11 or 15 years, the most, like 15 years and God kept him. So if I was speaking to the man, I would say no matter what your wife does or doesn't do, you don't have the right to turn your back against God and sin against God. That's what I would tell the man. Uh, what would you tell the woman? I would tell the woman to be a wise woman and not to take advantage of uh, your husband's kindness or his love for the Lord. You are not being... Uh, wise woman, you are you being a godly woman when you are denying your husband um the sex. Yes, I get it. There are the factors that come in, that, that come into play. But this is why you got married. And if there are issues in the relationship, then you and your husband uh go to counseling and make sure that you receive the help that you that you need in the relationship. But you don't have a right to to say no you don't want to or you go on this fast. You know the scripture already tells us that if you're going to go on a fast, that you both have to agree not to have sex. Um, both. That one, both. one person cannot be in the spirit and agree yeah. with the other. Right. You can. You both have to be in agreement. And so, again, going back to some one-on-one -on -one Bible understanding, the word of God says, you're going to fast, be in agreement. If your husband says, no, I still want to have sex, God God sees, God's not going to say, well, I'm going to answer your prayer because you have sex. No. No, so actually, the, you hinder your prayer from being answered when you disobey the word of God. Right. So you can fast. And your fast not be effective because mm -hmm. now you disobey the word of God Why by dishonoring mm -hmm. your husband. Mm -hmm. Yes. So husbands, your partners, no matter what happens, you can't just say, well, I'm going to get my knees met out elsewhere. Wife, you have a responsibility. Take care of your business. Don't abuse that God, the man of God that he has given you. The enemy is going about. He's seeking to destroy. What you're seeing happening there. It's simply a spirit of the age. The enemy is after marriages. So we have to be, we ourselves have to be vigilant. As a wife, I have to be vigilant. I have to ensure let's, that I'm doing what I I'm let's, doing. Let's, let's make it plain. Make it plain. Mm -hmm. um, because we're, as men, we're not monsters. Mm -hmm. Ho hopefully. Mm -hmm. There are some times where I want it mm -hmm. and you be willing if I really wanted to get it, I could get it. Mm -hmm. But because I have some compassion, I know she's very tired. And I know she has to get up early in the morning or whatever. I'm able to say, okay, um, we, we, we wait till tomorrow or uh, another time. Because I, I, I do care about her. Uh, sometimes I, I, I can put my own needs and desires aside. And I hope that you have the capacity as a man to do that sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, what is what is your rule that you, you know, because there are some times where you really don't have it. Yeah. And to, to you're not there. Yeah, there. There's several ways. Like, okay, I can pleasure you, you know, or uh, in me, meaning I'm, I'm not getting anything at all. You know, I'm not necessarily, necessarily giving anything. I can give myself. I can pleasure you. Or we can say, okay, hey, can we come back to do this, uh, come back um, tomorrow, you know, uh, to do this. So there's... there's, there's and whenever you say tomorrow, it has to be tomorrow. Right, right, absolutely. So, I mean, these, these are matters where... So it doesn't, it doesn't pass the 24-hour 
Um, I, I don't wait beyond 24 hours once that request has been made. Because the enemy is seeking to destroy marriages. If he can destroy marriages, then he can destroy the next generation. It's not even about your marriage. It's about your children. It's about the next generation. Mm -hmm. Because when now a child has to be ashamed because their father is falling into sin, and then other kids mm -hmm. are laughing at that child, you know, all these things like, well, I don't want to be a part of this church. I, I don't want to be a part of this God because I see, I saw what happened. Mm -hmm. this, this thing doesn't work. So you've got to fight against uh, generational curses fight against the enemy who is seeking again to go right to the heart of God because he knows if he can destroy marriages that means he's he's destroying he's he's aiming at the at the heart of God where God wants you know two to become one so they can have righteous suit so be vigilant be sober be vigilant wives husbands be sober be vigilant be careful even with the friends that you're hanging around because those friends might be pulling you further and further away from your if spouse. The, if, if the friend is not a friend of the marriage you need to start to purge create boundaries create a security system because not everybody is a friend of the marriage right so any friend that i had if they're not a friend of my marriage i have to hold them at a distance mm -hmm. because i can't i can't it's, it's it's too expensive. It costs me too much mm -hmm. for uh, me to lose my marriage over friends or over family. Mm -hmm. So anything that's a threat, you have to preserve this union. It's it's because everything else falls apart. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's are this many questions, but we we have to right. to, to start to close it uh, down. So we, there's a lot of, there's a lot more questions, but thank you, thank you so much for. Uh, coming here tonight. So yes. just a couple of closing comments. Um, make sure you download the Life 360 app. It'll be great for your marriage. Go and download the resources that we have there uh, in, um, in the link. So the link can be reposted. And we're going to send another link if you want to get on the email list. You know, we can send out information when, we, um, when we're posting more things to do with, uh, with marriage. We can certainly do that. In the, it's in the last month. But thank you so much for, for joining you. us. Uh, Thank you to our overseers and uh, all the committee who allowed us to come and be a part. I uh, hope that you were blessed. We certainly have enjoyed uh, hanging out a little bit on this Zoom. And uh, we just are excited. We want to hear some testimonies. If it's you know, a blessing, let us know. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and bless you, Lord, for your anointing for marriages right now. I speak, Lord, the mm -hmm. things that we receive from your word, the things that we've seen in our Father, yes. the things that we have heard, Lord, that we mm -hmm. put these things into practice. Mm -hmm. And we thank you, Lord, for your anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for the liberty of the spirit that yes. breaks the power yes. of offense. Yes. In the name of Jesus, I speak, yes. Lord, that love abounds, yes. that our communication is seasoned, Lord God, with salt that administers grace to yes, the hearers, yes, that yes, our Lord. words, our sweet words, our words yes, edify, Lord. our yes, words Lord. build. Lord, our yes, words Lord. don't tear down. Mm -hmm. We thank you and bless you, Lord, that the Jesus. power of the enemy, yes. the generational curse of divorce, yes. uh, the curse, Lord God, of infidelity is yes, broken. Yes, we say yes. it stops here. Jesus. I draw a bloodline, yes. the blood of the everlasting covenant. Make, mm -hmm. Lord God, these relationships perfect mm -hmm. in every good work to do your will, mm -hmm. working in us that which is well-pleasing through yes. Jesus Christ, oh, our yes. Lord. Oh, we yes. thank you. You are the God of peace. Mm -hmm. You are the God that sanctifies. Yes, I Lord. speak, Lord, salvation yes. for marriage. Yes. I speak salvation and deliverance that these marriages Jesus. are saved. Yes. These marriages are born again yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus. We thank you for the power of the gospel, yes. the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. Jesus. We thank you that yes, the enemy Lord. is defeated yes. and the word of God prevails in yes. Jesus name, in Jesus name, that the children, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Yes. Lord, that our children are blessed, Lord, because yes. the anointing is flowing from the parents to the children and to the yes. grandchildren. Yes. We bless you and thank you, Lord God, that there's a vision, Lord, that as a marriage, as a couple, as a family, Jesus. Lord, we are prospering and as are in, are in health. Lord, that, that as a couple, Jesus. we are growing old together yes, with Lord. long life, Lord, that this marriage Jesus. is flourishing in Jesus' yes, name. Lord. Yes, Our Lord, Lord, that there is no end until, yes, until Jesus Lord. comes or until one of us departs, Jesus. Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are preserving and keeping. We yes, thank Lord. you, Lord God, for the leadership of this church. We thank yes, you, Lord, Lord, for our overseers. We thank you, Lord, for our pastors. We bless them 
them in yes, your name. Yes, and we thank you, Lord, that we are good soil to receive the word yes, of life yes, that they are yes, sowing yes, to Lord. us on a weekly basis. And yes, Lord, that we are applying the teachings, Lord, yes. to our marriage and to our family yes. so that our families are flourishing in Jesus' yes, name Lord. to the glory of God. Jesus, we yes. bless you and thank you. Yes, Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We had no time back over there like this. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Great servants of God, Pastor Paul and Fiona Athas, for the powerful two days uh, of Kingdom Marriage Retreat. We will never remain the same. All of us who have attended this uh, powerful conference, uh, our speakers, they've been pouring all out, everything that was in them, and they were doing it wholeheartedly. Oh, thank you so much, servants of God. Thank you. Once again, we want to say thank you and thank you.